Radio Ya. When Fidel goes down, and it could be any day now. Increíble. No more his ugly face on Canal 23. When Fidel goes down to the bottom of the ocean. Yes. Thomas Garcia for stay. We'll have nothing left to say. When Fidel falls all the way through, that even a stunt major will finally smoke decent cigars. Oh! And folks in Havana will rave when they trade in those three 1958 cars. Incredible. When Fidel goes down, El Diablo Camunista will make every day Monday through Sunday. Just like Sabido Gigante No more his ugly face On Canal 23 La Cucaracha, La Cucaracha Oh, where's Rick Sanchez when we need him? 1002 at 560 WQAM Happy Tuesday to you Wee. Happy Tuesday, man It's going to be a great day Anybody buying it? No Oh I didn't expect a great day I expected, you know, kind of a, a day A, a day? I came in here this morning and George was pa 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 and my initial reaction was what a what a jerk you know yeah well and I then I started see. thinking about it and started putting the pieces of the puzzle together I thought boy that George has sure got his thumb in it on it well I'm gonna go wash it off now yeah please Chris said he'll lick it for you ew no I didn't yes you did <laughs> no he was ripping you an ass before you came back from your first uh, joy I was he always does no I was oh okay. I was just ripping you a major. Well, I just wasn't prepared. You hit me I like, uh, uh, you know, I came Sorry about and the miscommunication. Didn't mean to make it uh, sound right like that. Pa, 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 yeah, hysteria. And that's because we work for crazy people who know nothing about this business. Well, Local. I say that about the radio business. That isn't this business. Nothing. Zero. Well, what are you guys doing? You're screwing the next show up there, jerks and jacks and tweep and twerp and uh, twicks and all That's not that. exactly what they said, but, uh, you know. Something like that. You could, uh, you could let get me the put it this it. way. We're doing the same thing we've been doing on this radio station for over ten years now. Sure. We finish the show the same exact way every day. And here's an interesting point, matter of point, fact, whatever the hell it is, point mm-hmm. and fact. What do they call right. it? Point Piece of crap. If somebody's not sitting in the control room at 2 o'clock when the next show is supposed to start, they can't hit the button to make the uh, open start right. or the ID or whatever they're supposed to. They can't do right. anything if they're not in there. Even if we're confusing them. So maybe we ought to take up a collection and buy a watch for Tweaks, Twerp, whatever. What is his name? Eric. Eric. Eric the Twerp. Let's, take, let's get a Mickey Mouse watch for him, okay? So that when the little hand hits the big hand at 2 o'clock... There's like mm-hmm. some kind of a sound. I yeah, that would be good. I'm like Pez. Yeah. <laughs> Eisner. <laughs> Where the hell did that come from? What, What's the like Gaviscon? Anyway, so uh, do something about him, because he's an idiot. And they finally have figured that out. It took him a long Everything's time. Fine. So don't go blaming us, jerks. The fact that your board op is a moron and can't get your show on at 2 o'clock. Which, by the way, uh, dead air is... Well, I'm not going to say it. Here's the poll from uh, yesterday, from the holiday. Well, what, what a bogus holiday. And if you think President's Day is a bogus holiday, here they started this year for the first time ever, Family Day in Canada, or at least in Ontario, and a couple of other provinces, I believe. I don't know. Family Day. So just another holiday to coincide with whatever's going on in the States. That's all. Uh, family Day, my ass. Most women would rather not date blank. That was George's poll, 819. I voted for the correct answer, a poor man. 277. Right. right. Nobody wants a poor man. And if you've got money, it'll money. excuse Everybody everything else. Everybody wants your money. Right. A slob, 98. An ugly man, 78. A fat man, 69. Boy, those last three in a row there, I got those licked. A known liar or user, 68. A married man, 53. A short man, 44. A mentally ill man, 35. A misogynist, 33, depending on what he's massaging. A convict, 29. A man with an embarrassing job, 14. I have one of those. <laughs> a stupid man, 11, an amputee, 7, a foreign man, 2, and a tall, tall man, 1. Let me say it again. If the board op isn't sitting his ass in the control room at 2 o'clock, he can't play the open for the next show. It's not complicated, okay? Tweak, twerp, 
And he brought him along with him. That's the best part of the deal. He brought this idiot along with him. You know what they say about birds of a feather fail together? Is that what uh, they what's say? What's this thing? Oh, uh, it came in whatever it was yesterday. Oh, my yeah, God. Are you kidding me? High comedy. Me? No, I'm not kidding you. It's hysterical. Should I read this? Hey, that's up to you. I think it's funny. Dear Mr. Rogers, having come to learn that you've recently announced your intention not to renew your contract with WQAM, it gives me great pleasure to offer you an invitation to join the Gay American Gay. Radio Network Gay. team when we debut across America's airwaves next fall. Garn will debut September 1, 2008. On that day, our flagship, flagship station, KYR, KRYA, will begin transmission from San Francisco Studios. A month later, on October 1, WQER, Queer, will begin transmission from Fort Lauderdale to the South Florida market. Both FM stations will broadcast from frequencies that will guarantee us 100% saturation of the target audiences in those markets, upwardly mobile, young and middle-aged gays and lesbians. In December, our third station begins transmitting from New York City, and in January 2009, our fourth station begins operations in L.A. Our five-year-long plan is to acquire at least seven more stations out of major U.S. markets. We believe that with you aboard, Neil, with the years of professional experience and talent you can bring, not to mention your demonstrated ability to draw listeners and winning Arbitrons, our network will have crossover success with a mainstream straight audience that is so critical for any successful broadcasting venture. You can't just depend on Gay. listeners. After meeting with our board of directors this week and receiving their unanimous enthusiasm and approval for extending this invitation to you, I'm also eager to meet with you and, and or Mr. Norman Kent Esquire and or whomever else may be authorized to represent you at the earliest opportunity so we may negotiate and agree upon any and all particulars in the contract between you and GARN, the Gay American Radio Network. You fairy! We are willing to provide you a compensation package that we, you will find quite lucrative. Huh? Though we won't be on the air until September and through your current contract, as I understand it, oh, and though your current contract doesn't expire until December, we'd entertain the possibility of buying out the remainder of your cream contract or to expedite our, you joining the Garn team in time for our debut Labor Day weekend. All right. We foresee your talk show being broadcast to affiliates nationwide from L.A. to New York. We'd be happy to present you to a wider national radio audience and to millions of Americans who may never heard of you before have been introduced to your unique brand of wisdom and humor, your unique brand. There's Dana Bash with the pinhead, shrunken head bitch. To sweeten the deal, I'd like to offer you in addition to the position of Vice President for Programming and Talent Recruitment, carrying with it added compensation. In this capacity, you'd be the network's executive in charge of scouting and recruiting fresh new talent to fill the broadcasting ranks of our network as wow. it grows. We've got experience recruiting, right? Yeah, a whole lot. Not recently, though. We believe that your vast experience industry... Well, let's talk about that. Let's talk about cruising in the 80s with Bill Tanner. All right. Wow. We believe that your vast experience, industry knowledge, and insight into what constitutes a radio broadcaster could... Well, sure, it has nothing to do with this station, I'll tell you that. Could be useful to Garn in helping find the right people for our stations and motivating them to excel in radio. I see. You would also have a cheat. In other words, I have a magic wand. Poof, you're a broadcaster. Well, you sure use that here at this station. You would also have a chief role in signing off on what programming our stations develop, as well as contributing input on how that programming is scheduled. You can still continue to host your show from Toronto. However, from having listened to some of your recent shows and being aware of the technical issues uh, what is it, emanating from both there in the QM studios, we would have to inspect your home studio and make any necessary technical upgrades or to bring your equipment up to par with our network's equipment and to meet the highest quality standards of a national network rather than those of a simple local station. We'd be interested in offering your producer, George Rodriguez, a contract to produce your show. Did you type this up or what? I, listen, do you really think that I have that much of a sense of humor? And I that the, clever? the last part of the phone number is chopped off, too. I noticed that page three is missing. Page three was uh, didn't come through. It was like all garbled and twisted like the machine right. munched it up. We'd be interested in offering your producer, George Rodriguez, a contract to produce your show for Garn. Also, we'd be willing to offer him a development deal to create, produce, and host what we envision as a new music program with a national scope. He could still continue to produce your show while assuming responsibilities for his own show. This has to be a job. Uh, it has to be. Aware that he's expressed a desire to relocate to the Pacific West Coast, we'd also be willing to discuss with him the possibility of assembly for him, should he still intend to relocate, a home studio of his own from which to produce your show and his own. We're interested in contacting, contracting your parody maker, Boca Brian, and having him produce his b popular Boca Bits for national syndication. 
should there be any outstanding issues reg- uh, that he still has with WQM and or Beasley over unpaid compensation, we'd still be amenable to settling these issues either by compensating what's owed to him ourselves or by assigning our, this is definitely a joke, that's, that's or our legal department to handle them pro bono on his behalf. We'd like to inspect his studio and recording equipment and refurbish any of that at no cost to him in order to ensure that it meets our state-of-the-art quality standards. We're developing a week-long series of programming originating from Washington, D.C. the week of January 18, 2009, in conjunction with the presidential inauguration. Our plans would include you broadcasting your show that week live from the nation's capital. A tentative working title for that week is Bye Bye Bush, America Celebrates, and Rogers Commiserates. As you'd expect, Garn reflects the political views of the majority of the gay and lesbian community, which is solidly anti-Bush. That's with a capital B. While we can't guarantee it, we foresee striving to secure appearances of the president-elect, vice president-elect, and other dignitaries for brief interviews on your show that week, likely before the January 20th ceremonies. All the better if the president-elect is either Mr. Obama or Ms. Clinton. Ms. Huh. Neil, I'm most anxious to begin discussions with you about the opportunity of your joining Garn if this proposal meets with your approval. Please call my office at yada, 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 and then the rest of the phone number is chopped off. I mean, I... Calls, what? I could try to is there really such a place as this? I, I, I mean, don't, is this I don't a, know. It's got to be a joke. I, it's got to be. Sweet deal, though. Do, you know, I don't have to be gay, do I? No. Good. But Boca does. Chicken neck. <laughs> I'm sure he's desperate enough. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm positive <laughs> of that. Well, what a way to start a Tuesday, <laughs> huh? Heavy duty, baby. Well, and that line about contacting uh, with you and or Mr. Norman Kent Esquire. Esquire, sure. Woo! Then you know it's a joke. Oh. He probably reads Esquire, but that's beside the point. Of course, he's doing that instead of negotiating me a new deal, you know. Or uh, keeping me in touch with what's going on. Because I'm the mushroom, baby. I'm in the dark. I'm off in a corner somewhere, just like a mushroom, in the dark. The lights are out, and I'm like, uh, blah, 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 like that. There's a, like a fax number where it came from on this. There is? At the bottom, upside down there? Oh, yeah. Big deal. Oh, I know. 12 minutes after 10 on Fag Radio. I mean, all uh, Gay. radio. Congratulations. Get a life. Hey, y'all. Hey, if you're old like me, and there's an emergency, you can summon help by pressing this little button. Sylvester Stallone uses Rambo Alert, and so can you. If you or your loved one live alone, a Rambo Alert system can mean the difference between life and death. Uh, yeah, because uh, sometimes, if you know, you may like experience like chest pains, or uh, maybe you're falling and you can't get up. For anything that might draw first blood, <laughs> Rambo Alert will come to the rescue, kill the bad guys, and take you to the hospital. <laughs> Peace of mind is there 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Order Rambo Alert today. Thank you for me, Slice Stallone. Heroes never die. They use Rambo Alert. I'm dying over here. That's what Fidel says, man. He's got his Rambo Alert all cranked up. It's a 1018 at QAM. So anyway, you said that uh, you're not a very good detective. Me? No. You said that at the bottom of this page there's a fax number so that this might be legit. The fax number, you'll notice, is 305. Mm-hmm. Right. I didn't say that it's got a number that it might be legit. I said it's got oh, a number. Right. Period. And if you Google this organization, um, there's no such place. It doesn't exist. Ah, oh, gee, what a surprise. Yeah. I thought but it was too that, funny to be true. Yeah, it's probably from like a Joel Feinberg or somebody like that. Or maybe from us inside the building might be possible. HHMG, baby. All right. Somebody with a very sick sense of humor. Thank you so much. Contact uh, Mr. Norman Kent Esquire, okay? The mushroom maker. He's over uh, sitting in the corner with his thumb up his ass. Well, I want to go to fantasy baseball. I'm going to get Joe Bell Tommy <laughs> Davis's autograph. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, you're laughing, but that was part of my last conversation with his No, network. no, no. Yes. You're lying. You're lying. No, I'm not you're lying. You're, oh, my God. No. That's his claim to fame. He's not negotiating anything, and he's not doing anything that I told him to do, but he's busy trying to get... You see, something you need to understand... Okay. About Norma Kent. Explain me. When he negotiates anything for me, it's not about me, it's about him. You've said that before. It's about his Marlin tickets and right. his Dolphin tickets right. and his Panther tickets. And I can't tell you the number of times that there's been all sorts of right. crap caused stirred up uh, being by him because he didn't get his Dolphin tickets or his Marlin's tickets. This is an overgrown child. Even through my smoke-addled memory, I remember you saying that years ago. Double yes, and, and it continues ago. to be very true. you know. So in the negotiations, it has to be tickets that I couldn't give a flying crap less about. Because I'm not there in the first place, so what do I care? 
Oh, my God, this is what I've entrusted my life to, my livelihood, my future, my existence on this planet. You see, it'd be one thing if you had, like, maybe 50 different chances, you know, if you could be, you know, get born all over again and with the same brain and the same memory and remember who the hell you are, you know. Oh, yeah, that'd, that'd be, be sweet. But you only got one shot. One shot, baby. That's all you got. Pop had, oh, and that was on over the weekend, I mean, just <laughs> nonstop. Uh, I don't forget, it was on movie uh, something, I forget what it was. All eight Godfather, just on and on, and I watched most of it too. Sure, it's addictive. I can't stop. Once I get on there, I can't. That's right. It's like me and sugar. Mm-hmm. I'm addicted to sugar and I'm addicted to the Godfather. Well, one of those is good for you. Really? It ain't sugar. Here's the uh, poll. This is I'm, I'm digging out some of the oldies and the baddies because we're not we're not getting much. Saw it. No. Charlie B. He's run out. He ran out a long time. I think I think what stopped him cold in his tracks. Oh, and those all those flicks about the animals, the cows and the uh, cattle being abused and prodded and tortured. Did you see that? I'm sure. Oh yeah, nice. And that just it's... stopped me cold oh. from eating another burger. Not, not. No, there's That's no really pure sick stuff for Matt Cow, is there? But anyway, I think what stopped Charlie B. Well, no, there's not. What thing stopped him was um, that poll about your favorite sandwich filling. That was the end. What's your favorite uh, sandwich filling? What's your favorite sandwich uh, holder? What's your favorite bread? Oh, my God. Charlie B., the B for um, pathetic. What do you believe about Jesus? I dragged that old one out of there for today. 497 vote. He was one of many self-proclaimed prophets, 243. Yeah, back in the day, they all used to run around, Oh, I'm uh, the Son of God. Yeah, that's right. Of course, he never said that anyway, but nevertheless. Well, first he I didn't, uh, then, then he did. Did he? Yeah, but it was in a different he was, gospel. He was, he was against it before he was for That's it. exactly right. He just got tired of denying it. and he went, 243, ah, yeah, he was one of many self-proclaimed prophets. He was the Messiah, 126. Jesus Christ is out there, 25%. He was the Messiah, yeah, sure. There was never any such person, 71. And he was a snappy dresser, 57. That was in addition to the uh, other four choices we had on the first time we did this poll. Yeah. I mean, the day after President's Day, why not? You know, it kind of fits right in, don't it? Since the current president thinks he's uh, him himself. Jesus Christ. Right. So that's what we got on there. 497, a pretty paltry total. But I don't know. I put it on there late yesterday. And yesterday was a holiday. So you got a good excuse. You're off the hook, Chris. All right, cool. So I understand that three times last week, Chris was called by Allison to go racing in there to start the uh, 2 o'clock The Jerk Show. I don't think it was three times. It was at least once or twice, though, yeah. Once or twice. And then the week before also. Yeah. And also the week before because Twerp, Twerks, Twix, whatever his name is, he can't get in there at 2 o'clock. Now, it's one thing when you're like Marvin Rawman and you can't get up to be uh, uh, to work to start a 10 o'clock show in the morning. I mean, to me, 10 in the morning isn't awfully early, you know? Hey, maybe not one thing for you. to be an incompetent like Marvin the Rawman, your close personal friend, mm-hmm. who for some strange reason after all these years, you still defend. Defending uh, the defenseless. He, he got me this job. I appreciate he it. He got you what job? The job I have now. If he hadn't been such a loser. Oh, get, you, you talk <laughs> about convoluted logic, man. That's pathetic. Oh, come on. That I'm is just pathetic. Jeez, where's your sense of humor on a Tuesday? Yeah, I had one when I sat down here and then you started talking. Uh huh. Joe Bell did this and uh, Clarence did that and he came in here a hundred times and then tweak and twerp and then you had Jackson there and uh, uh-huh. embarrassing and humiliating and degrading him on the air. No, uh, I don't do that to him. No, he does it to himself. Now, what was I just about to say? Marvin Rawman was a loser, and if he can't come in oh, here yeah, at 10 if o'clock... Can't, if you can't be there at 2 o'clock to have a job, you shouldn't have a job, twerp. You should not have an effing job if you can't be there to sit in that room at 2 o'clock. And if you can't tell what time it is, then you certainly shouldn't have a job. In any business, you idiot. And Jerks earned his name. He brought this uh, kid along with him. Where, where did he come from? Was he across Cleveland? the street? Wasn't it Cleveland, did he say? Uh, originally from Cleveland, and yeah. Worked with him in um, Bristol or whatever, and... Yes, ma'am. Anyway, here's the schedule for today. Two o'clock or whenever they get their act together, it'll be the jerk show. Must be our fault. It is. We've only been doing the same thing for ten years plus on this station, but it must be our fault Correct. that their board op can't be sitting at the board and run the ID in the open. In fact, we play the ID, don't we, at two o'clock? We, we do. Yes, I do. I have to ask? Right. Ten years we've been doing that. And five more on the previous station. And Charlie Joe's it. got to come in there conducting an inquisition. Well, what is the, what's the reason that uh, they... Because the producer, the board op, whatever his title is, is an a-hole, okay? He's a jerk. He's incompetent. 
He can't be sitting down at uh, two minutes till two and, and get his act together. That's why. Oh, no, it's so confusing. You guys don't uh, end the show the same way every day. Yeah, well, guess what? How about ending it right now? Sounds like a winner to me. Sounds like a plan, baby. Just tell us how you're going to do it. <laughs> oh, I'll tell you, I'm going to do it. <laughs> Only I'm not going to be on the receiving end. So anyway, that's the uh, drama we got now. Always got to be drama. Jerks at two or thereabouts. Mad Dog four to seven. Then you got that Dolphins all assess abortion with Jimmy Syphilis and Joe Bailey seven to nine. And then the DA show, a real honest to God show from nine to midnight. Now where where do they get him? Who's producing his show? Carlos uh, Picari. Carlos or Rob uh, kind of changes, I think. Well, on the schedule, it says Carlos. How do you think I would have known? Yeah, and then on another night, it should probably say Rob. Rob? Rob Walker. Who's Rob? Another board op here. Yeah, how old is he? 12. Uh, 20. 20? About that. What's he look like? Not good looking. Oh. Oh, I was I was getting ready to come I, back. I don't know. I just said that. I have no idea. How do you know? You like. probably never even never laid eyes on him. You probably oh. never even laid him. He might have walked past me in the hall, but I never, you know. Well, Chris knows him. He's okay, I guess. I don't know. I mean, I don't know what your standards are. I'm not asking whether you have the hot his, form or you want to do something are very in the high. team room. I'm just asking uh, what he looks like. Is he pretty? Does he, he look like, like a girl? Guy. Does he look like a Does pretty girl? Does he look like a girl? Yeah. Like who? Tell me a pretty guy that looks like a girl. Brad Pitt? Uh, okay, uh, Rob Lowe, what, before he got old. Rob Lowe, he looked like a girl. He in fact, like I think he, uh, yeah. I think he's in that category. Didn't they marry him off, though, just like they married off Rock know. Hudson? Sooner sure. or later, they marry them all off. You know, somebody went through a lot of effort to phony up that thing that I just got through reading on the air. I know. I mean, there's a lot of verbiage in there, and mm -hmm. you, and imagination, Brian, and a lot of Norma detail, Kent, right. and blah, 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 and this and that, mm -hmm. and they're just, uh, They should be a comedy similar. writer. Probably one of Norman's voices. This is Neil Rogers. Sports Radio 560 QAM. The Sports Leader. Who am I being lucky? Now see here. For the record, I quit. And I did not get fired. You people did not want more around Danny Moe. Well, kiss my pony ass. Cause I ain't never coming back. And I knew that you'd miss me. About as much as Bob Fishy. I knew that you'd miss me. That's a horse. You took my magnificent talents for granted. And one rape too many. Well, now I'm gone. As long as Ginger keeps his show in Florida, someday he'll be as famous as Mark Scheinbaum. <laughs> Your ratings after two are now in the turret. <laughs> now it's your time to get raped. <laughs> you might as well turn your crappy signal into outer space. If you see that nice. I knew that you'd miss me, this cantankerous yiddy. I knew that you'd miss me. Hey, did you hear I'm trying to do the backup for the doors over here? Am I ever going to get you out of my life? 1033, 27 before the uh, big hand hits uh, 11 or something like that, or little hand, whichever hand it is. I take that hand and stick it up, Eric. Right, if I were you, okay, way in there, all the way up to his throat. Or just take both of your hands and put them around his throat and squeeze as hard as you can. And the fact that this little putz goes crying, oh, it's their fault. They're doing something on the Neil Rogers show that I can't. That's screwing us up at the beginning. They end the show different every day. I don't know what. I don't know when to start. You can't start if you're not in the damn control room, you moron, you idiot. You were right, and I apologize to George. Huh? Well, I got I got bent out of shape as you started okay. in. I uh, just sat down here. Right. Well, I didn't communicate it very well anyway. No, you did not. Early in the you morning. You started out very surly. I just That's barely right. had my fat ass in the chair and right away, ba 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 ba. Yeah, very surly. Oh, and speaking of ba ba ba, guess who called me? Oh, Jesus. Called me on Sunday and called me again yesterday. Let me give you a clue. Ba 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 ba. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Columbus is playing the Leafs here uh, tonight, and so uh, he was in town and uh, sniffing around. Ba 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 ba. Just go away, Rimmer, okay? Leave me alone. Quit ringing my phone. Go away. 
I don't want no lunch. I don't want no dinner. I don't want to uh, see you. This is a strange phenomenon, you know. What? Those kinds of things that people that, um, I don't know, can't take hints. How about when you go on these appearances? The people that you oh, don't want to show see, up. Right. People we hate like poison. But those are crazy people. See, I understand. Oh, you? I see. I make excuses for them. Mm-hmm. What's his? You don't know? No. I see. And if it's free, it's me. Oh, yeah, there well, you go. No, that's easy to understand. Anyway, 524 on Chris's pool. Let's get it up to a roaring 750 today by the end of the show. Something like that. All right, sounds good. Before we start our new show on the Gay uh, American Radio Network. I'd like to know who uh, spent all of that time. Obviously, somebody with way too much time on our hands. Right. Not that they don't have some talent. There were some good lines in that thing. And not only that, but you, you see this um, organization they invented, the Hollister Hudson Media Group in San Francisco? It mm -hmm. doesn't exist. There's no such right. place. They went to a lot of trouble. There's no Garn. There's right. no this. There's no that. There's no phone number. A lot number of attention here. to there's detail there. There's a bogus there. Uh, fax number. Sure. You can trace that fax number, by the way, even though it's not for real. Right. They can do it. Mm-hmm. But nevertheless, dear Mr. Rogers, and uh, we are <laughs> eager to meet with you and or Mr. Norman Kent Esquire. This is probably from, like, uh, Reverend Jones or one of those crazy people. I uh -huh. don't like that, although he would never be able to. They're not that, they're not that huh? talented. They're not that clever. No. You can tell. But it is uh, a real masterpiece, a work of art. Saying he's no longer healthy enough to hold orifice, Cuban leader Fidel Castro has announced he will not seek re-election after 49 years in power, nearly 19 months sidelined by illness, marking the first official step in a long-awaited succession in the island's leadership. And if you open up the window there, you hear it all over town. Oh, he's dead! He's dead! He's not dead. And an occasional Ay, Papa Juan Pablo. one of those. It would be a betrayal to my conscience to accept a responsibility requiring more mobility and dedication than I'm physically able to offer the 81-year-old Castro wrote in a letter published in today's editions of Cuban newspapers. This, I say, devoid of all drama. Your mama. He doesn't want to be a drama queen, Fidel. I'll leave that to Raul. Castro's not unexpected announcement came just days before the Cuban National Assembly meets Sunday to select members, that's next Sunday, and president of its Council of State. The president of the council is the official ruler of Cuba, and that's been Castro since the council was established in 76. And now he's made it clear that he will not seek re-election, making way for new leadership for his communista government. Communista, communista, communista! President Bush, in his first comments after learning of Castro's resignation, said during a press conference in Rwanda that his thoughts are with the people of Cuba. Right. Sure they are. They're the ones who suffered under Fidel Castro. They're the ones who were put in prison because of their beliefs. They're the ones who've been denied their right to live in a free society, Bush said. No, he's talking about Americans. We've been denied that right since uh, he came in. I view this as a period of transition. It should be the beginning of democratic transition for the people of Cuba. Now it remains to be seen whether Castro's 76-year-old brother, Raul, Raul, you fairy, the world's longest-serving defense minister and designated successor, will be named to officially take the reins of power. Although Fidel is widely expected to retain a strong voice in the country's strategic decisions for the time being. Fortunately, our revolution can still count on cadres from the old guard and others who were very young in the early stages of the process. Some were very young, almost children, when they joined the fight on the mountains, and later they've given glory to the country with their heroic performance and international missions, he said. They have the authority and experience to uh, gu guarantee the replacement. How do you replace Fidel? I don't know. It's not quickly. easy, baby. It's not easy. Well, first you have to have a big beard. Yeah. And be real ugly. Right. And, and smoke uh, a big fat one. Long-winded and like to talk for hours and hours. But his absence hours. from the political scene raises many new possibilities for the revolution, especially considering that nearly two-thirds of the country's 11.2 million people were born after 1959 and have known no other leader but Fidel. Castro's successor will take office amid increasing complaints about the system shortcomings, especially high prices and low wages. Oh, like at QIM. Like George and uh, Chris, high prices, low wages. When Castro was struck by an intestinal illness in the summer of 2006, he temporarily turned that title over to and several others to Raul. He's not made any public appearances since then. The government has periodically released videos and snapshots of him, at first looking frail and gaunt, and later a little more healthy. His signature military fatigues have been replaced by tracksuits in the red, white, and blue of the Cuban flag. The jubilation felt on the streets of Miami that summer night Castro seated power quickly petered out when Raul Castro's hold on the job proved firmer than exiles in Miami expected. It petered out in Little Havana. 
Raul's 19 months in office are marked by remarkable stability, which served to underscore the strength of Cuba's military and the Comunista Party. When in doubt, in Little Havana, it petered out. It's the same dictatorship with a different person, said John Ased Rivero, executive director of the Democratic Di- uh, Directorate, a Miami exile group that works with dissidents in Cuba. It's not even a new person, but one who's been around for 49 years. Maybe Petey Lenny wrote that uh, three-page piece. That could be. Yeah, that, that's up his alley. Mm-hmm. That's the kind of crap he would waste his time doing. Because he sure ain't selling nothing on this show. That's for damn sure. <laughs> or maybe any other show, for all we know. But he does uh, create a lot of problems and run around the halls making a lot of bad, bad gossip. Bop, 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 bop. Oh, that sales manager, that Chris Jones, bop, 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 what a bone it. And then he gets on, uh, gets on the Internet and sends him an email sucking his ass. Wow. Nice going there, P.D. Lenny, you phony. I didn't forget that. Maybe you think because I'm old I forget stuff like that. No, no. We do not forget. This we do not forget. Remember that speech? Mm-hmm. Marlon, at the meeting of the five families. Then I do not forgive. Yeah. Forgive or forget? Forgive. Forgive. But I'm a superstitious man. And if you should get hit by a bolt of lightning. I'm a superstitious man. Yeah. Oh, there's that magic again. Some unlucky accident should befall him if he should get shot in the head by a police officer. Or if he should hang himself in his jail cell. Or if he's struck by a bolt of lightning. And I'm going to blame some of the people in this room. And then I do not forget. Estoy estrangulando el pollo por acá. Ticket, ticket, stick it in the ticket, in the wicket, in the ticket. How's Wilson Pickett? What? Castro, get out of Cuba. We just can't use ya You've been around way too long You fairy Castro You ugly bastard Too long you've lasted The Bay of Pigs should have worked Fidel, you make me sick. Get out of Cuba quick. You are so god. <laughs> you amigo, son of a bitch. Absolutely. Baseball, we know you like. Are you behind the strike? Uh-huh. Where were you in 63? Did you kill Kennedy? Muerte! 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 Get out now and free your nation. Are you into masturbation? Uh-huh. See, there will live the embargo. Cuba will become another key lago. USA! USA! We're turning all the rafts and boats away. Lucy! Castro, get out of Cuba. We just can't use ya. You've been around way too long. Castro, you ugly bastard. Too long you lasted. The day a pig should have worked. Hey, puppy! See, tell you make me sick. Get out of Cuba quick. You are so goddamn. What? Amigo, son of a son bitch. Of a bitch. Baseball, we know you like. Are you behind the strike? Where were you in 63? Did you kill John Kennedy? Yes. Muerte! 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 Get out now and free your nation. Are you in the masturbation? In there will live the embargo. Cuba will become another Kilago. USA! USA! We're turning all the graphs and bots away. Lucy! 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 Adios, sees it goes 12 minutes before 11 at 560 WQM. So what's happening in South Florida now? Is everybody running around with their windows rolled down, honking the horns? And I don't know. Not here. Waving their Cuban flags. You hear what? Not in Broward. What do you mean in Broward? 
Well, that's where I live. You in Broward? Well, not right You're at the moment. Broward, right now. We're just south of the county line here. Yeah, no kidding. Like I don't know where it is. Well, I didn't see anything happening here today yet. Like on the corner there at the Amico station, they weren't celebrating and waving uh, Cuban no, flags and screaming. No, no, no. Oh, what a disappointment. No. Okay, here's the uh, Jesus Christ poll for all you Jesus Christers out there. 546 votes. What do you believe about Jesus? He was one of many self-proclaimed prophets, 270. We have 546 on there, by the way. I think you got a shot at the 600, Chris. All right. He was the Messiah, 133. Yeah, sure. There was never any such person, 79, and he was a snappy dresser, 64. Those Birkenstocks, man, it gave him away. He was a clothes hog. You ever know anybody like that, a clothes hog? No. I do. Oh, I see. Oh, my God. Here's some exciting news. We got the big primaries. This is the day, baby. We got uh, Wisconsin tonight and Washington State. They already had the caucuses in Washington back on February the 6th, but now they're having the primaries to see if it uh, turns out any better this time, although it turned out good the first time. Well, you know, keep doing it. And then who else? In Hawaii today. Now, what, what's the time difference? About 100 hours? Yeah. I've been there six times, but a long, long time ago. I, I can't figure it out. I don't know. Is it on the other side of the planet? Yeah. I mean, it's five hours from L.A., so it's got to be about eight hours, I would think. That's right. Is it right? Well, it's three hours to L.A., so. Right. Four, seven, eight hours. The founders of Ben & Jerry's endorsed Barack Obama uh, yesterday. Did you talk about this? No. Oh! Well, why not? Oh, that's because Suds was there, uh, number that's one. Right. And number two, you invited jerks in there to embarrass and humiliate. Well, that was on radio. Friday. Well, that was on Friday? Sure. Both? For one segment. Just once, on Friday. Who? Jerks. One segment until he ran out. Right. He said he'd be back, but then he never did. Well, that's because you embarrassed and degraded him and embarrassed and humiliated him. I, and I didn't think like that was fool. possible. Yeah, you're right. The founders of Ben & Jerry's endorsed Barack Obama yesterday and led his Vermont campaign to Obama mobiles that will tour the state and give away scoops of cherries for a change ice cream. Oh, I sure hope it's a good flavor because their new ones lately have been crap, like I told you. Yeah. Crapola. The glob father. Blah! Oh, my God. <laughs> Horrible stuff. If there was ever a need for real change, and if ever there was a candidate to inspire us to make that happen, it's now, said Ben Cohen. Added Jerry Greenfield, Barack is showing that when you lead with your values and follow what you have inside, that good things will happen. Echoing Obama, Greenfield said that he and Cohen succeeded when they opened their ice cream shop 30 years ago About 30, man. in Burlington, Vermont, doing, by doing things differently instead of copying the tired ways of doing business. What we saw is that when you want real change, it's not a marketing slogan. You have to do things differently. And that's not going to be done by someone who's been involved in the system for years and years, Greenfield said. It needs to come from inside, and Barack Obama's got it. Senator Patrick Leahy, Democrat of Vermont, and his wife joined the ice cream duo to announce their radio campaign backing Obama. Cohen initially supported John Edwards, who dropped out of the race earlier this month. Rob Hill, director of Vermonters for the Obama campaign, what is that? Said he looked forward to getting behind the wheel of one of the... Two Obama mobiles re retrofitted Honda Elements. What's a Honda Element? It's a kind of a car, a Honda. My. I mean, what, what more description? You want me to go on? You know, you, you treat me like some kind of a, a what child. What kind of question is that? Like some kind of a child. Well, in other words, what kind? I know it's a car. What do you expect and I know it's to hear? a kind of a Honda, but what does it look like? What does it do? It looks What's horrible. It all about? It's, uh, it, it's like uh, a utility kind of vehicle, but it's not high up off the ground. It's, uh, it looks weird, if you ask me. Really? Yeah. Well, then it ought to be one of those Obama mobiles. It okay. It'll stand out with, like, maybe a Barry, Ben & Jerry's ice cream cone, Ben Cohen on top. But I guess it's not ugly. It's just or maybe with a Marty Cohen on top for that right. gay radio network. With sprinkles, I'm sure. And that was very cute. Make no mistake about that. I might just read the whole thing again, especially that I'm, part I'm about Norman it. Kent Esquire. Sure. Oh, my God. That's, that's hysterical. After meeting with our board of directors this week and receiving their unanimous enthusiasm and approval for extending this invitation to you, I'm also eager to meet with you and or Mr. Norman Kent Esquire and or whomever else may be authorized to represent you. Mr. Norman Kent Esquire. And we're also interested in contracting, con contracting your parody maker, Boca Brian, and having him produce his popular bits. This, is, uh, this has got to be somebody we know. I'm thinking, yeah. Should there be any outstanding mm -hmm. issues that he still has over unpaid compensation, right, mm -hmm. as it becomes more and more ridiculous as it goes along. We would be amenable to compensating what's owed to him ourselves 
Well, they just, these I know, only, they only wish on. we could find they, people like this. Sure. They just got buckets of money they want to hand right. out. They're fairies, all right, because they don't exist. <laughs> oh. You fairy. Wow. Woo! I'm going back to bed. I think this no, is no. a dream this whole day. You can't do that because I might have to run back to the bathroom. So just uh, Why is that? Oh, not again. Uh, yeah, not inside, uh, I don't know. Not again? Uh-huh. Must have been from that show yesterday. You should never have to work. This whole thing with President's Day, for all you young punks out there, anybody under the age of 100, we used to have Lincoln's birthday and Washington's birthday. And they said, well, we can't give you, like, two holidays. I mean, I think Lincoln's birthday was February 12th and Washington's was February 22th. Am I correct? I believe. Mm-hmm. And so they they compromised, and they made one day, I guess it's the, what, the third Monday, I don't know what it is. And they made it President's Day, which is the most stupid day. Why can't we just have like a John Quincy Adams Day and a Grover Cleveland Day and a Andrew Johnson Day, you know, right. like for every president? And Ed Lincoln was Gay Day. Right. And Grover Cleveland and, uh, well, what's his name? And William Howard Taft with that big handlebar mustache. Mm-hmm. And the Woodrow Wilson. And the leak, leak of nations, all that crap. I guess we're not going to do it. But anyway, so February 18th is President's Day, and they decided, oh, that, let's make it a uh, official holiday for some people. And you can either take off that day or Martin Luther King Day. Not both. I mean, what kind of a deal is that? That's just a way to demean King Day is what it is. Mm-hmm. To make it, no, that's for dark folks, okay? If you're white, you'll celebrate President's Day. We've got a, a better holiday for you. And so, being the white guy that I am, I took off President's Day. Why well, you took off Martin Luther King Day? How about that nasty meat man? Just oh, stop yeah. me cool from ever eating another burger. Right. Damn it. What does yeah, uh, right. mad cow disease feel like? So Why do you keep talking about mad cow because disease? Because that's what they were talking about on the news. That oh, they were talking getting. about all kinds of crap. They're, 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 who said they had mad cow disease? They said that's one of the things that might be a problem with uh, with these animals that uh, because they don't know because they should you know they shouldn't have passed inspection. Yeah. Well, maybe after they poked and prodded them and hit them with the tractors about 20 or 30 times, maybe that's why they didn't pass inspection so good when they were falling down and slopping around, you know? If they did that to you, you'd be a mad cow. What a bunch of barbarians, man. What a bunch of lunatics. And that's where we they grind it up all nice and they color it with a bunch of artificial coloring and they put it in those packages. i got some in the freezer right now, man. Some really dangerous meat. Biggest names. The best talent. This is Neil Rogers. Sports Radio 560 QAM. The Sports Leader. This is the Neil Rogers Show. Abu Dhabi. This is your brain. Any questions? Before there was Garfield the cat, there was Garfield the president. James A. Garfield, 20th president of the United States back in 1881. And he's every bit as lovable. Introducing President Garfield Collectible. Delightful President Garfield toys, t-shirts, accessories, and more. Like a cute and cuddly President Garfield plush toy. Beanbag President Garfield. Inflatable President Garfield. Even car window President Garfield. With four suction cups so President Garfield can go anywhere you do. All with President Garfield's adorable full-length beard and stovepipe hat. The President James A. Garfield Collection. Because it doesn't matter what it is. If it says Garfield, you'll buy it. No, well, that's what you think. It's 1101 at 560 WQM. Happy Tuesday to you, man. we got all kinds of cockerot going on here at QAM. we got George battling it out with the... What, what's his name? Tweak. We're Corp? all friends now. We're going to party. Get out of here. We're all friends. You're <laughs> such a sellout. You're such a loser, Why do you man. take everything I say seriously? I don't know. Because it aggravates you. Okay. 573 on Chris's poll. He's aggravated because we're not going to get anywhere near... A thousand a day. What do you think the reason is for that? Crappy poll? Started late, maybe? I don't know. Yeah. Not good. Maybe we ought to change it. Holiday. Oh. That's a good excuse. A California meat packer accused of animal cruelty is making the largest U.S. meat recall on record. 143 million pounds, the U.S. Agriculture Department said on Sunday. Did you talk about bad meat yesterday? No. What does Mad Cow feel like? Most of the you got to do a lot of choices. I see. Most of the meat, raw, and frozen beef products probably has already been consumed, said USDA officials at a briefing. Mm -hmm. Some 37 million pounds were bought for school lunches and other federal nutrition programs. USDA said it was only a minor risk of illness from eating the beef, as in like... I'm dying over here! Yeah, like that. I think I have it. Hallmark Westland Meat Packing Company voluntarily recalled all of its beef product produced since February 1, 2006. USDA said Hallmark violated the rules against the slaughter of downer cattle, that is, animals too ill to walk. 
This is the largest beef recall in the history of the U.S., unfortunately, said Agriculture Undersecretary Richard Raymond. Based in Chino, California, Hallmark Westland has been closed since early February. Can't imagine why. Company officials not immediately available for comment. The Humane Society of the U.S. showed videotapes on January 30th. About 30, man! Showing workers at the plant using several abusive techniques to make animals stand up and pass a pre-slaughter inspection. These included ramming cattle with forklift blades and using a hose to simulate the feeling of drowning. Oh, they're waterboarding the cattle now. All right. A recall of this staggering scale proves that it's past time for Congress and the USDA to strengthen our laws for the sake of the people and animals, said HSUS President Wayne Passell. Raymond said the recall stemmed from the slaughter of cattle who couldn't stand at the time of slaughter, although they passed inspection earlier. Packers are required to alert USDA veterinarians in those cases so they can decide if the animal can be slaughtered for food. Like Connie said, or no, uh, Eli Waller said, oh, you eat it. You're so skinny, you eat it. <laughs> In most cases, beef from downer cattle is barred from the food supply. The rule was adopted as a safeguard against mad cow disease, a deadly brain-wasting illness. I feel People like can wasting. contract a version of the disease by eating tainted products. Uh -huh. Don't be eating no taint. USDA said there are many other safeguards against mad cow. Until now, the largest U.S. meat call was 35 million pounds in 99. How much is this? 143 million. Makes the other one look like a piker. USDA said the Hallmark Westland recall ranked as a minor health risk because it involved a violation of inspection rules rather than proof of contamination. Most of the meat products recalled were beef, but a small amount was ground pork. Ground pork. Not kosher. <coughs> Trafe. Groundhog. They... Announcement of the recall will help the search for beef produced by Hallmark Westland that may be held in freezer plants or maybe in your pants. Got any bad meat in your pants? No, it's all good. Senator and Agriculture Committee Chairman Tom Harkin said in a statement that USDA must toughen its inspection measures before animals are slaughtered to prevent future recurrences. And they keep showing that uh, those tapes on there over and over and over again. And they're prodding and poking. Like the runaway broad man. Did they prod you? Did they poke you? Yeah, like that. How much longer will we continue to test our luck with weak enforcement of federal food safety regulations, said Harkin, an Iowa Democrat. Federal regulations exist for a reason to protect public health. For Hallmark Westland, to wish a recall that goes back two years indicates that violations may have been long-term. Very good, Tom. Very astute. How do you like that? They're poisoning the public and they're screaming about the terrorists, okay? Let me tell you this right now. The greatest danger to your life isn't from a bunch of uh, towel-headed lunatics from outside the country. It's from the lunatics who are running the country and running a lot of businesses and poisoning you and your kids. But nevertheless, why worry about that crap, right? Life right. is short anyhow. Right. Just whistle a happy tune. 580 on the Jesus pool. And there's Dana Bash again, the... Uh, incredible shrunken head. Does CNN ever hire any, like, white male news anchors anymore or not? I don't know. Have you noticed that seems to be know. the thing now? they got uh, no, those TJ Holmes and Shylock Holmes. I've never noticed. Uh, all these uh, light-complected dark guys. Dark-complected light guys. I don't know what they are. Yeah. I don't know what that's all about. Yeah, go hire a white guy to read the news already, for Christ's sakes. What's wrong with you people? And I'm not talking about Wolf Blitzkrieg, either. No, that's you, not a white mean, guy. You mean a white guy. In the frantic race for the Democratic nomination, where every delegate counts, states like Hawaii, Wisconsin, and Washington are now playing a bigger role in slimming down the race. At stake, 94 Democratic delegates and 56 Republican delegates. Did you see uh, old uh, Bush won over the weekend? Did you see no. him yesterday uh, endorsing no. McCain? No. It looked to me like he don't have long for this world, old Bush, old man with the ball. You talk about a crook. You talk about a devious, dangerous son of a bitch. There was George Herbert Walker Bush and the whole family. In fact... I got an article here in my pile. I may have to move it up. About the Bush family. You're just you're just gonna squeeze your kneecaps when I'm you're getting you're ready. You ready? Getting squeeze out. it. All right. The Bush family right. slave holding past. Really now? Hey yeah. blame them. I didn't By have any. Edward Ball was their dynasty built on slavery. I'm moving it up in my list. All right. Just above uh, did uh, out of control Bill Clinton slap a protester. You know something, Bubba? You talk about Turn, changing your opinion yeah. about somebody. Well, you know he owed her, right? He owed her what? For Monica? That's for right. For, for, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, and she right. stuck with him and, you know, and all that kept Get her stiff up her lip. He's a lunatic, man. He's turning right. into a raving temperamental. Well, you knew this was going to happen. temperamental people. I disagree with you. Too many bubble mices. By the way, that Rimmer thing, if he calls me again today, I'm going to be so P.O.'d, man. Just... 
enjoy the game, Rimmer, and uh, go go do something. Get away from me. Leave me alone. In the frantic race for the Democratic nomination, where every... Oh, I just got through reading that. Senator John McCain, the pre- presumptive GOP nominee, faces a less contentious nomination. He currently has 830 delegates to uh, Mike Huckleberry's 217. McCain needs just 1191 total to clinch the nomination. So he's only about, let's see, 270, uh, three, uh, 461 away. For Democrats, the results of today's contest could help Senator Barack Obama continue to drive a wave of momentum. He's got the big mo, baby. Do, 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 do. In the upcoming March 4th Texas and Ohio primaries, two contests that could be make or break for Senator Swillery. CNN has compiled information about the three states voting today. Well, thank God for CNN and that it makes, it shrunken makes head the... Dana Bash. Oh, and your boy, by the way, Lou Dobbs, is a crazy person. Well, we knew that. He was carrying on, I think it was yesterday, about that uh, alleged plagiarism by Obama in that one speech, you know, carrying on and on. Like, like, you know, it's only as important as the media makes it out to be. You know, make a big simus about it. Like it isn't done all the time. Mm-hmm. What a bunch of crap. Lou Dobbs, crazy man on CNN. He's white, but he's not a newsreader. He just wants to kill all the Mexicans except his wife. And maybe, who knows? Maybe he wants to kill her, too. Who knows? Maybe she's responsible for his very sour attitude. Democrats and Republicans poured into caucus sites in Washington State on February 9th, and they're now going to the polls today for the state's primaries. And you're wondering, what? What does that mean? I don't know. Washington State is a vote-by-mail state, meaning most voters cast their ballots by mail. There are some traditional polling places open in two counties, but relatively few Washington State voters will go to the polls today. Most will have already cast their vote by mail. Also, the Democrat and Republican primaries are open, so any registered voter may participate. Voters in Washington State don't register by party. Like Mo said, call them when the party started. For Democrats, today's primary is nothing more than a non-binding beauty contest because the party uses the February 9th caucus results to determine all of the delegates. So it's just, it's a, uh, you know, an exercise. The Republican Party, however, utilizes both the caucuses and primary results to determine how delegates will be apportioned. 18 for the caucuses, 19 for the primary. Following this, there's John McCain, no. crazy man. In America, and we've got to bomb, 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 bomb. Oh, he's just insane. Aloha, Democratic voters, it said. It's time to caucus and in all effort to determine when, which Democrat will come out on top in Hawaii. And when you think of Hawaii, you normally envision moonlit luau's, sun-kissed bodies, and mo- monster surf. But in this race, 20 delegates are up for grabs. The party caucus is open because voters don't register by party. Therefore, any registered voter may participate, though participants must sign a Democratic Party membership card at the caucus site. Obama's secret weapon in Hawaii is his younger sister, Maya Siatoro Ning Ng. How do you say Ng? Ng. Ng. Who lives in Honolulu. Ng? Ng. But lest you think Clinton is giving up on Obama's backyard, think again. Daughter Chelsea. Oh, my God. She is uglier than ever. She is the nastiest. She's got a donkey puss. Chelsea, okay. am I right? She looks like a hyena. I'm just trying to picture that. And will bad weather wreak havoc on Wisconsin voter turnout uh, in the primaries? The forecast for the state today is temperatures in the single digits with snow possible. If she wins Wisconsin, a lot of people will say, now wait a minute, is Obama's momentum over, said CNN political analyst Bill Schneider. Schneider said Obama does well in red states like South Carolina and Idaho, but Wisconsin is a narrowly blue state, so it might be very close because there's a large core partisan Democratic vote, and the polls show it's very close in Wisconsin. Oh, there's all these different polls. Here's, here's one that shows that she's six points ahead in Wisconsin. Here's another one taken February 13 or 14. shows he's ahead five points, and it's just uh, don't pay attention to the polls. They're silly people anyway. It takes 20 of them just to put in a light bulb. Got it? Hmm? On the Republican side of Wisconsin, 37 delegates are up for grabs, but a beat, but a boop, but a bop. Huckleberry campaigned in Milwaukee this weekend and said he's staying in the race to try to rally the traditional base of the GOP, meaning Farbison, right wing evangelical lunatics, hate mongers, people like Mike Huckleberry himself. Like that. Checks on him. $35 billion. My friends, for that $35 billion in earmarked projects, we could have had a $1,000 tax credit. For every child in America. Now, let me ask you, if he went dancing with George Bush and put his head up against Bush's ass, would they be dancing cheek to cheek? Oh, who'd be the leader? Yeah. Sick. Really sick. Who dips but who that's does. the best we got, man, is John McCain on that side. And it was always Mitt Romney, who looked like he came out of a cartoon. And the Huckleberry Hound. Who else had dropped out? Ron Paul. He's still right. in Ron Paul. Anybody say, voting yeah. for him? No. no. Anybody talking about him? No. No. Who else dropped out? That guy from California, Duncan Hunter, that nobody ever heard of? Oh, yeah. Remember him, Duncan Donuts? No. That's a good poll. Who do you like better, Duncan Hunter or Duncan Donuts? Who? i got to confess to you, I'm not a big Duncan Donuts fan. 
No, that's nothing new. We've talked about that. Yeah. That's Krispy I mean, Kreme, okay, but okay. Krispy Kreme so much better. Yeah. You I can't they, eat only like one dozen. Right. I think they have twice the sugar and yeast in them. I think that's their secret. Yeast? Yeah. yeah. Makes it yeastier. 596, Chris is really ripped up and excited about this poll today, the Jesus poll, 597. You see that? They're pouring in by the ones. All right. I bet you the Jesus Christ is some of them ain't too happy about it. Well, you know what? Too stinking bad. The biggest names. The best talent. This is Neil Rogers. Sports Radio 560 QAM. The sports leader. Know that the Lord even loves Neil Rogers. Religious cults have become a part of history. James Jones, Charles Manson, and David Koresh. And now, the man known as Just Doe. Who is that castrated fellow that we're worshipping? Uh, gee, sir, they call him Doe. Doe? <laughs> He's a powerful speaker. He's very persuasive. I don't even know what that means. Yes, he looks a lot like Buddha. Oh, what a swell guy. He gave me free vodka. <laughs> I can burp, he can bond, he can clean his belly and pick his nose at the same time. He's got to be a god. Oakley, Oakley. Oh, this guy's got more followers than Jerry Garcia. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please welcome our fearless leader. Watch, no leader. Watch my husband. Don't. Oh, remember, everyone, before we get on the spaceship, you must be wearing the official shoe of the Sector 7 Gate Cult. That's right. Just don't. It's do. Uh, do <laughs> Go. Yes, go. Go. Ugly, go. Who? Go. Oh, boy. Go. 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 It's 1118 at 560 WQAM. So yesterday, this is the next story that I'm going to uh, peruse through right here. Mm-hmm. On MSNBC, they kept they kept making fun of it. And I'm not saying that this is legitimate. These are documents they found about the JFK assassination. Who knows? It doesn't sound like it. But nevertheless, and, and the jerk that they kept going to in Dallas that they kept putting on the air, he's, he's making all these cryptic comments, and he's laughing. Like, oh, well, you know those Kennedy assassination theorists. Oh, 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 oh. Meantime, this guy wasn't even alive then. You realize how many years ago that is now? That's like 45 years ago. Well, almost. 44 and a half. And they got some 30-something uh, punk on there talking about, oh, well, you know, oh, they'll all be making a big deal out of it. Oh, he doesn't even know what he's talking about. A bubblehead. And that's that's because the people on the on the 24-hour news channels, they no longer can read stuff anymore. they got to do editorial comments about crap that they have no idea what they're talking about. You jackass, you... You fair. I was just wild. Wild, you believe me? Yeah. No. I was not too happy about it. It sucks. The Dallas County District Attorney's Office has announced the discovery of a trove of documents relating to the assassination of John Kennedy. I mean, can you imagine a conspiracy, something like that? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Only kooks believe in stuff like that, like, you know, like flying sausages and stuff like that. What the hell happened to my uh, babbling? Oh, there she is. <laughs> oh, my God. For a second, I thought she vanished. I thought maybe she had too much waxy buildup. By the way, goodbye, Joel Feinberg. I forgot to mention that again today. Nice job, Joel. Wasting daddy's money. Millions. Millions. Uh. Anyhow, among the documents is an alleged transcript of a conversation between Lee Harvey Oswald and Jack Ruby, planning the assassination together on behalf of the Mafia. This document has aroused the greatest amount of interest, but has also been described as highly suspect. You know what they mean when they say highly suspect? Like, like that. Mm-hmm. Dallas DA Craig Watkins explained at a news conference yesterday morning that the documents were found in a safe about a year ago, soon after he took orifice, and that his staff have been examining and cataloging them ever since. Previous DAs had decided not to reveal the information, but Watkins said his administration's devoted to openness and felt it was too important to keep secret. It will open up the debate as to whether there was a conspiracy to assassinate the president, Watkins stated. Ruby, the owner of a Dallas burlesque club, shot Oswald while he was in police custody two days after the November 22, 1963 JFK assassination. I watched Ruby uh, shoot Oswald live on TV on NBC. The transcript has Oswald telling Ruby, the mafia boys in Chicago want to get rid of Attorney General Robert Kennedy. There's a way to get rid of him without killing him. I can shoot his brother. Yeah, it's always a lot easier to shoot the president than it is the Attorney General, right? That sure made a lot of sense to me. The curator of a Dallas museum devoted to the assassination has pointed out that Oswald is known to have been elsewhere October 4th, the alleged date of the conversation. The safe also contained a 1967 contract with the then DA for a movie about the assassination, and the DA's assistant has suggested the transcript was part of a proposed movie script. They found a bunch of uh, papers, unsigned, un, uh, you know, just in, in a box. 
And Brad Pitt was there. What's in the box? What's in the box? Boy, he was on biography a few days ago. Mm-hmm. And they showed pictures of him when he was, like, young and really uh, right. hung. And, oh, my God. He looked like God. a girl. Huh? He looked like a girl with uh, no breasts. A purdy girl. He was sure pretty, man. I mean, tan. And purdy male. Wow. Woo! Blonde. You right. know, he was born blonde. Right. And then he got, like, brown hair, and then it was uh, blonde That's again. Yeah, Happens he's... to all of us. What? Well, I wasn't blonde, but I had, uh, you know, medium brown, and then it just got darker as I get older. And gray. Oh, yeah, that too. I never got gray, just uh, gay. Yeah, like that. Gray yeah. without the R. Gayer. Can't do that. Impossible. Anyway, a new, this is interesting. Of course, all, all these uh, channels have got all these different polls. You know, one, one yesterday, I think it was on that Lou Dobbs, on that crazy uh, bastard, on that xenophobic Lou Dobbs. Uh, oh, well, uh, in Texas, Swillery is 85 points ahead, and in Ohio, 140 points ahead. You know, cra- just crazy stuff. A new CNN Opinion Research Corp poll suggests the battle for the nomination between Swillery and Barack Obama in, uh, is a statistical dead heat in Texas, which holds primaries March 4th. Haven't they been saying all along that she's like 7,000 points ahead in Texas? Yeah. yeah so you don't know because you're not paying any well, attention. Also, it's got nothing to do with you food. getting stoned or laid, okay? If it has up. nothing to do with you getting stoned or laid, you don't pay any right. attention to it. Right. And I had a mouthful of pretzel. Pretzel? Yeah. Fair. In the survey out yesterday, 50% of likely Democratic voters support Swillery and 48% Obama. But taking into account the poll sampling here, Maso minus four and a half points, uh, the race is a virtual tie. Two recent polls by other organizations show the race is statistically even. One reason the race appears to be tight is that Texas Democrats are having a hard time choosing between two attractive options, says CNN polling director Keating Holland. Likely Democratic primary voters would be equally happy if either candidate won the nomination, and they don't see a lot of difference between them on several top issues. Oh, issues, what's that? Issues, what's that got to do with whether her husband's acting crazy or whether he's using those seeing other people's speeches? What's it got to do with crap like that? And whether his wife said something stupid about now she can be proud of America and like that? All you crazy people in the media looking for some little slip, some piece of verbiage somewhere. Oh, my God, he said this and she said that. Just pathetic. Just pathetic. Zion America, baby. Tragic. Many political strategists and analysts consider Texas and Ohio, which also holds the March 4 primary, must win states for swillery. Obama's won the past eight contests, now ahead in the battle for overall delegates, 192 of which are at stake in Texas. What was that? Be clear my throat, sorry. Oh. Among Republicans, 55% in Texas support McCain. 32% Mike Huckleberry, and 11% support the home state congressman and former libertarian standard, oh, libertarian Ron Paul. That explains why he's such a uh, nebbish. He's a former libertarian. Texas Democrats and Republicans may not see eye to eye on the issues, but the polls suggest they do agree on what's the most important issue. 35% of Democrats and an equal number of Republicans said the economy was most important in their choice for president. Well, there you go. But today we've got to worry first about Washington. We don't have to worry about Washington State because it doesn't mean anything for Democrats. No delegates. It's a beauty contest between Swillery and Obama. And believe me, I don't think either one of them will win any beauty contest. Do you? No. <coughs> I mean, Brad Pitt, he could win a lot of beauty contests back in the day. Not anymore. Nobody wants to admit that he's old and uh, lost that uh, love and feeling now, you know. He may be uh, feeling it. He's growing some craters on his face that he has. Oh, bad. Really bad. He's got, even on the moon, they don't have. Nobody lost forever, you know? Yeah. A lot of makeup, man. 615 on Chris's Jesus pool. You proud? Proud of Jesus? Oh, I'm so proud. Proud of of, uh, twerp that. uh, See, you're telling me that just, it's just, it's just so typical uh, of this place. Well, yeah, that shouldn't How is it possible? Me. And don't you tell me that they have ding-dong school every day to get ready for that show? I don't know about every day, but certainly frequently. Well, if they have ding-dong school, why can't whoever's conducting the ding-dong school take a, a hold of somebody's ding-dong and tell them they need to be sitting in a the chair there like five minutes to two? And the whole point, which I expressed very poorly, was I wasn't confused by his inability. That's nothing new. You get people, and that people in here all the in time. It. Right. I was confused about management's misunderstanding of whose job it is to press what button when. Yeah. I mean, we, we have no control over it. He can go in there. Torp could go in there right now and cut right. us off. All and he's got to do is press right. a button. The master control room. We don't do the show from the master control room. He might just. He might just what? Go, go in ahead. there and cut us off. I could use a good rest. But-
Hi, I'm a generically bland sports figure. Many sport holes get confused when Valentine's Day comes around. That's the time of year when closet gay sport holes have to pay attention to women. That's where Sport Hole Bouquet comes in. Their take on your take is to take the worry out of your take on <coughs> women. Sport Hole Bouquets are designed to satisfy a woman's needs, in addition to banging someone else while you watch or play the game. So relax. Just give it a flowers and give back to your real game. Watching, talking, and dreaming about men. Mm. <laughs> Call 1-800-SPORT-HOLE-BOUQUET. Keep your dial tuned to sports radio all day. And don't feed the beer. <laughs> oh, 1131 at 560 WQM. So how is he doing, your good friend? Oh, you always get upset when I ask you that. He is just fine. Everybody's is he? fine. Yeah, I'm going to see him today, I think. Well, good. And you I'll pat ask him on the again. Head for me. I'll pat him on the bald head. I'll put and tell that, uh, that gay uh, network is all hot to try hey. for. Hey. And they want to go. They're amenable <laughs> to uh, going and getting them all kinds of money, even from people that don't know money. <laughs> that really, when you stop to think about it, this. I'm looking at it. I looked at it during the break. Is one of the funniest things. It's a masterpiece. You called it. That's what you yeah. called it. And took a lot. I mean, a lot of time. This is typewritten like a uh, mm-hmm. single space. About uh, eight million words. You know. Right. It's got the indented slug paragraphs. Right. And parody maker Boca Brian, and having him produce his popular Boca bits for national syndication, we'd be amenable to settling those unpaid issues either by compensating him what's owed to him ourselves or by assigning our legal department to handle them pro bono on his behalf. Maybe this is uh, from uh, your good uh, friend, that uh, Boca's lawyer there. What tells his name, Jan Murray? Yeah, right. Yeah, maybe that's from them. Sure. Oh, I, I wouldn't be surprised. I, I have a feeling they have a lot of time on their hands. 6.32 on Chris's Jesus poll. What do you think well, about Jesus? What, what's your take on Jesus, baby? How about touchdown Jesus? Here's that article I threatened to read. Is it too long? Oh, my God. Go on and on. It's, oh, no, it's not too long. Edward Ball on the TheRoot.com. The Bush family slaveholding past was their dynasty built on slavery. You know how the Brits say dynasty? Yes, they do. Sad. And what about that Diana business, huh? Duty fired, said, oh, duty on the royal family. They killed her. Like, that's, that, that's new news. In addition to which, so, so what about it? Edward Ball says the image most people have of slavery involves a cotton plantation with a big white house, a black village where 300 people live in cabins, and a cruel overseer in the wings. This was not the model followed by the ancestors of President George W. Bush when 175 years ago they enslaved about 30 people on the shores of Upper Chesapeake. About 30, man. It's an apt time to contemplate the link between slavery and the White House. This week, President Bush is in the midst of a six-day trip to Africa, his second tour of the continent. He will visit several countries, including Benin, Ghana, and Liberia. What the hell's Benin? What? I don't know what you Benin. It's one of those renamed countries. Sure. From which the U.S. once drew slaves. That the trip falls on either side of President's Day, which honors statesmanship in the White House, makes the occasion all the more fitting. The moment is mature for the president to speak about slavery, especially given his personal connection to slavery's legacy. A new book by Jacob Weisberg, The Bush Tragedy, mentions in passing that at one time some of the president's family owned slaves. Weisberg doesn't dwell on the links between the White House and the antebellum past, except to say that Bush clan story is a long-held family secret. The Bush Tragedy, revealing a book about family dynamics in the Bush political dynasty, treats the slavery matter only briefly, focusing instead on the spectacular avoidable flame-out of the receding administration. But the story that joins the 43rd president to predecessors who held titled to dozens of people bears retelling in detail. The skeletal fact surfaced in April 2007 when an amateur historian named Robert Hughes published his research in the Illinois Times, a small paper out of Springfield. Hughes found census records showing that during the late 18th and early 19th centuries, in Cecil County, Maryland, five households of the Walker family, the president's ancestors by his father's mother, Dorothy Walker Bush, had been slaveholding farmers. The evidence is simple but persuasive. Genealogies of the Bush family match up with census data that counted farmers who used enslaved workers. With this, the president joins perhaps 15 million living white Americans who trace their roots to the long-gone master class. It's not as though the president's the only politician whose family owned slaves. Of the first 18 presidents from Washington to Ulysses Grant, 12 owned people, eight of them while in office. 
At one time, Andrew Jackson was even a slave trader. Since emancipation in 1865, a number of presidents have come from families that once contained slave masters. Even the current presidential hopefuls are likely to have slave owners among their ancestors. The descendants of slaveholders don't wear special tattoos or announce themselves in secret handshakes, but most know who they are. The tragic story of America's slave days inspires disabling levels of fear among whites and anger among blacks. Probably neither the 43rd president nor his father, the 41st, possesses the introspection needed to grasp the relationship between the Bush family's slaveholding past and its present circumstances without escaping into defensiveness. Still, President Bush has talked about slavery from several microphones, most memorably in a 2003 speech on Gory Island, one of the slave castles in West Africa, from which captive youth and children were dispatched to the Americas. Speechwriters likely supplied the words on that occasion when the president said slavery was one of the greatest crimes of history. But the words fell short of an accounting by the White House for America's role in the Middle Passage, and they came before the revelation of the Bush family's own link to the slave past. As for the African Americans in this tale, the Walker family slaves, neither names nor biographical details about them have survived. According to the genealogist who uncovered the records, Robert Hughes, the census accounts show that they lived at four different farms in Cecil County, Maryland, on a string of land called Sassafras Neck, which separates two slender rivers that empty into the upper Chesapeake Bay. Probably a little bit like Aintree, I would imagine. Eh? There in 1790, William and Sarah Davis, direct ancestors of the president, owned seven people, while another branch of the family owned five. Twenty years later, in 1810, a third couple of the president's ancestral clan were counted as masters to 18 people. The last appearance of the family as slaveholders of record comes in 1830, when George E. and Harriet Walker, great-great-great-grandparents of President George W. Bush, owned 321 acres and two slaves, a female between 10 and 24, and a male between 24 and 36. The namelessness of the slaves is the fault of the so-called slave schedules used in the census, which called for nothing more than approximate ages. Masomenus, you know, like, oh, maybe 12, maybe 40, whatever. With their small farms, the Walkers and their cousins didn't belong to the class of oligarchs whose vast plantations held scores of hundreds of workers. Scores or hundreds. I've looked as there were dynasties in Cecil County, places like Cherry Grove, former residents of Maryland Governor, and uh, Mount Harmon, a vast tobacco state with a Georgian mansion. The president's forebears probably saw themselves as little people in competition with these fat cat neighbors. Still, all slaveholders were also slave traders. The president's family had to avail themselves of a slave auction on at least two occasions, initially to buy people, and later when a Walker farm failed to sell some of the same people, much the way stockholder liquidates an investment. No story has surfaced about how it happened, but in the mid-1830s it appears that George E. Walker, the president's third great-grandfather, lost his land. After that, in 1838, he packed his family into a wagon and went west, settling in southern Illinois on a homestead near the town of Bloomington. It was from this branch of migrants that the current Bush clan descends. And it's more. I better do the break, okay? Just one okay. more page. It, it's moderately interesting, you know. As compared to a Britney. I don't have any Britney stories today, so if you're writing for the Britney story, take a, take a hike. Oh, God. The biggest names. The best talent. This is Neil Rogers. Sports Radio 560 QAM. The sports leader. Oh, God. I'm dying over here. Bush ignored the city of New Orleans. Yes, some of the people down there say he failed. Stuffed the people in the Astrodome like cattle. While half the National Guard was in Iraq. Absolutely. He cut funding for their levies, looters causing anarchy. In Aruba, we made a bigger deal. In search for Natalie Holloway, for one white girl we drained a lake. And even asked for help from the Navy SEALs. George Bush was vacationing in Crawford. I guess next year there'll be no Mardi Gras. Girls gone wild needs the city of New Orleans. Or they'll have to send their film crew to Florida. Oh, my God. Fate worse than death, baby. 16 till noon at 560 WQM. We got the Jack Show at approximately 2 o'clock. It's the only show on the history radio that started. Well, no, I take that back. We were once upon a time right. when Stern was on. Right. 
We were a show that started like, oh, well, uh, maybe uh, 10, maybe 10, you know 30, what? maybe that, 10, 40. It didn't occur to me. That's funny that you should bring that up because during those days, we didn't know, not just from one minute to the next, but what hour to the next we were going to be starting, and yet we didn't miss our cues. No, that's because we were sitting, we were in, in place. Right, waiting for our cue. Now, let me ask you, since you met this moron, Eric, on Friday, <laughs> you said you went and had a... No, no, seriously. Right. What is it that he's doing at 2 o'clock when he's supposed to have well, his that, hands Well, that's the million-dollar question, he, you know, because there are other little production facilities here, as you know, a couple little little rooms over here, and uh, presuming, presumably he's getting stuff ready for the show. He just uh, doesn't realize that 2 o'clock happens when it does, since it happens at a different time every day. Incredibly. Wow. Anyway, can I get to finish up this uh, column here by Edward must. Ball, the Bush family slaveholding past? Can I do it? All right. Well, you don't sound very enthusiastic about it. Please do it. Since the Walkers, in effect, declared bankruptcy, and there's no evidence they kept slaves after 1838, it's difficult to follow a money trail from the family's commercial stake in slavery to the White House. However, before he took his family west, it's likely that George Walker sold the people he owned, hand, handing them off to speculating slave dealers, thereby financing the family's fresh start in Illinois. Things get worse when you contemplate the probable circumstances. In the 1830s, the old tobacco economy of Maryland and Virginia was waning, while the new king, Cotton, had caused Mississippi, Alabama, and Georgia to boom. The tobacco states were selling tens of thousands of slaves to the cotton states and sending these people south. It's quite possible the Walker slaves were marched 500 miles from Maryland to Alabama to end up on a giant cotton plantation where the work regime, large crews on vast, unshaded fields, was crueler than the one they left behind. The Walkers eventually quit farming and made a fortune as dry goods wholesalers in Missouri. Later, they made another as investment bankers in New York. Nearly all the Bush Walker family money dates from this more recent period after the Civil War. The family, nevertheless, seems to have looked back with nostalgia on their old slave hold. There are two pieces of evidence for this. In the Bush tragedy, Jacob Weisper refers to one of the later patriarchs, David Walker, as a believer in eugenics and the unwritten law of lynching and cites as proof a letter Walker published in the St. Louis Republic in 1914. Black people, he wrote at the time, were more insidious than prostitution, and all the other evils combined. The second piece of evidence is within living memory. In 1930, when they could afford it, the family again embraced the antebellum lifestyle. That year, President Bush's great-grandfather, George Herbert Walker, bought Duncannon Plantation, an old ca a cotton estate in South Carolina, to use as a hunting retreat and vacation home. His namesake, George Herbert Walker Bush, the current president's father, spent many youthful vacations on Dunn Cannon, where teams of black cooks, valets, and drivers served him and opened doors when he approached. The Bush heirs no longer owned Dunn Cannon Plantation, but for a time, the estate provided a version of the baronial life to which the antebellum walkers aspired, but never achieved. The heirs of slaveholders aren't responsible for the past, but in a better world, they'd be accountable for that past. They'd make an effort to deal with the slave story, talk about it, and try to come to, term uh, come to terms with it. At present, the Bush political dynasty seems to be dying in misrule, finished off by a president who, as Weisberg writes, is driven by family demons, overflowing with confidence and lacking any capacity for self-knowledge. The Bush plan may not be capable of reckoning personally with the tragic inheritance of slave days, but this week on his state visit, the president sets foot in three countries that sent hundreds of thousands of captives to America. Today, some of the tens of millions of descendants of those captives want a White House that's accountable. In West Africa, President Bush had a superb opportunity like the one presented to a physician attending a wound. A sound physician would cho choose instinctively to apply medicine, not simply turn away in denial and neglect. Edward Ball, author of Slaves in the Family, and most re recently, The Genetic Strand. Okay. 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 I mean, okay. Okay. That's what I was waiting for. How's he doing, by the way? Is he uh, back on again for the hundredth time? Is he doing politics now? Is he doing the voices? Have we got Margaret back on again? Uh, all that. Are you sure? I don't know. Well, you talk about a guy who's gone through more different incarnations, man. Un it's unbelievable. Am I right? Yeah, well, maybe one of these days one of them will work. Now, well, what does that mean? Was that a well, shot? I mean, yeah, I guess a little bit. I mean, he's, uh, you know, he's had his ups and downs. Uh, you know. How about you go up and stay up? Speaking of that, Bubba, Bubba's down. In my opinion, anyway, he just—I he just, I see him now, and I get angry. He, he talks such nonsense, man, such garbage, cheap shots. Democratic political professionals worry that former President Bill Clinton is out of control and destroying his wife's campaign after he reportedly slept, uh, slapped a heckler at a rally in Ohio and got into a shouting match with another one. Right. 
Party insiders tell Capitol Hill Blue that the former president's hair trigger temper is surfacing more and more as he campaigns for his wife, and his actions are detrimental to the party and to the senator. The Swillery. We are looking at a man out of control, says one Clinton advisor. He won't stay on message and too often seems like a madman on stage. He has to be stopped or removed from the campaign. Sources say angry and abusive Clinton routinely chews out campaign staffers and even members of a Secret Service detail. The Associated Press reports a Barack Obama supporter claims former President Clinton slapped his face after he repeatedly heckled him during a speech in Ohio. Robert Holman made the allegation after he chanted Obama's name as Clinton campaigned for his wife at a rally in Canton yesterday. As soon as Clinton finished speaking, the Canton native darted to the rope line to give Clinton a piece of his mind. This is the last hurrah. After March 4th, Hillary will be out of the race for good, and Obama will take the commanding lead, he said. She should back him with her delegates immediately. That's what I'm asking them to do, Holman heckled. Holman told MSNBC that Clinton was irate and jabbed his finger at him. I think he even hit me in the face with his hand, he said. He gave me a little pop, like that. No pizza, but a little pop. Clinton could be seen pointing at Holman, but it was unclear whether there was any physical contact. In Steubenville, Clinton got angry at another heckler. The National Journal reports a frustrated Bill Clinton angrily raised his voice in response to heckling from pro-life protesters at a rally in Steubenville. When protesters first held up signs reading abortion kills children, the former president responded calmly, outlining his wife's path policies to help children and mothers. But when interrupted a second time by a more vocal heckler, Clinton shouted in response and stabbed his finger at the protester. I gave you the answer. We disagree with you, he said impatiently. You want to criminalize women and their doctors, and we disagree. If you were really pro-life, you'd want to put every doctor and every mother as an accessory to murder in prison, he continued, as the crowd applauded in its support. And you won't say you want to do that because you know that wouldn't have a lick of political support. This is not your rally, he concluded, still agitated. I heard you. That's another thing you need. A president, somebody will stick up for individual rights and not be pushed around, and she won't. Gosh dang it. That's what Bubba said. How do you like that? He's pissed off and fired up now. He's had it. You had it? I've had it. Up to here. Yeah, right. Like, uh, what's his name? Like that idiot. Brian. Cox. Outrageous. Broadcasting. Yes. 660 on the pull. We got a shot at 750, like I said. Not exactly taking off. Well, that's, you know, it's an old pull. You're yeah, right. Who got wants old an old pull? From what my experience, not too many. Not many want no, an no. old pull. Just got to look around. Really? Yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll see. I can go get busy. No, right no, don't now. start now. I'll start at 2. Doug Thompson on Capitol Hill Blue says time for a real leader. Hillary Rodham Clinton claims she has solutions while Barack Obama only has speeches. Obama, she says, borrowing an old Texas cliche, is all hat and no cattle. From this vantage point, we'll take Obama's words over Clinton's solutions. Given her performance in the last day of Democratic presidential primaries, we'd also say Hillary is all hat and no delegates. As her rhetoric turns shriller, Clinton finds herself with fewer ears to assault. Blacks desert her in droves to back Obama. Latinos are taking a second look at the senator from Illinois and liking what they see. Her base among older white women erodes daily. At her cavernous campaign headquarters in Arlington, senior staff members scream at each other and point fingers of blame at anyone but themselves. Her attack dog husband, neutered by a backlash against his overaggressive tactics last month, now utters the same shrill rhetoric as his wife. Hillary's in trouble, and it shows in every movement, every action, every bungled attempt to jumpstart her campaign. Her new strategy of putting everything on the line in delegate-rich states of Texas, Ohio, and Pennsylvania threatens to turn her into the Rudy Giuliani of the Democratic Party. She may still pull this one out. Nobody in politics can top the Clintons on comebacks, but this time the odds are longer and the opponent may be better than the, at the game than them. Dissing Obama's speech is at best risky strategy. Barack Obama is an exciting candidate, and his charismatic appeal restores faith in the political system that many Americans despise because of the last seven years of George W. Bush, the eight years before that of Bill and Hillary, and the terms of other presidents going back to Richard M. Nixon and Watergate. Obama brings hope in a time of despair and attracts those disillusioned by the system back into the electoral process. As Americans, we desperately need to feel good again about our country. We need someone to restore that pride that the Bushes, the Clintons, and others have stripped away with too many lies, too many scandals, and too many assaults on our freedoms. Call it the man on the white horse syndrome, riding in to save the day. Perhaps it's fitting that the man riding that white horse may be black. At another time, perhaps it could be a woman on the white horse, but this, at this time and place, that woman doesn't appear to be Hillary Rodham Clinton. Barack Obama is not perfect. No human being should claim perfection, and no voter should expect it. But a real leader inspires the nation he or she serves. A real leader motivates. A real leader restores hope to a nation in despair. At this time, based on what we see in here, Barack Obama is that leader, and Hillary Clinton is not. Amen, Doug. 
He's still alive, okay? They hit him with 50 million shots, and he's still alive. That's bad news for you, for me, and bad news for you if you don't get Sonny to make that deal. Do the jaw thing. What? you got to do the jaw thing when you say that. Oh. You know, sideways. Hey, 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 hey. Let me worry about Luca. <laughs> yeah, let me worry about Luca. Luca Brasi sleeps with the fish. Oh, there's Tessio again. I mean, uh, Clemenza. You bozo. And it's so obvious, you know. You just you need to do a lot more homework. You haven't. You've only seen like maybe a hundred, two hundred times. What are you telling me about that? What? You know, you've been wrong in your life. No. I'm sorry. I was wrong about that. I'm always wrong. Okay. Oh yeah, I'm always wrong, no matter what. I mean, ask my mother if she ever comes back. Oh yeah. Always wrong. Whatever I do, it's the wrong thing. Whatever I say, it's wrong. I'm used to it. Doesn't bother me at all. 670 votes on Chris's Jesus poll. What do you believe about Jesus? Don't you think we ought to do a Castro poll for tomorrow? Yeah, sure. Let's put one together Let's right now. Do it. I'll, I'll, let me give you the result of the Jesus poll. 325 say he was one of many self-proclaimed prophets. 164, 24%. A quarter of this audience say he was the Messiah. Yeah, Yoshki. There never was any such person, 96. And he was a snappy dresser, 85. That's what the photos show. I bet you uh, he shopped at Abercrombie & Bitch. Yeah, it's Paco's, uh, I think he's given up on that. He's into Dolce Gabbana now, you know, stuff like that. Well, at least he's got good taste. Yeah, he's moving up in the world. Okay, Paul on Castro. What, what's your take, right, on Castro's resignation? Sure. You like that? Okay. I was thinking, what's going to happen now that Castro has resigned, and then we just put one choice on there? Nothing. <laughs> yeah, that's a George poll for mm -hmm. you. Okay, what's your take? We'll get 2,000 votes. Uh, it's great. Right? Right. It won't change a thing. Right. I don't, I don't care. Okay. Right. I don't give a damn. And, communista, communista. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. Right? Sure. For South Florida, man. Communista, communista. I love that. It is really. Incredible. Yeah. Okay, that's it. There's your poll for tomorrow. I mean, our poll, whatever. Whoever, whoever is working on the show. Maybe we can get, what's his name to fill in for a while? Eric. Not, not Eric. Okay. Not, we don't want to confuse our poll man, Eric, who's a great right. guy, with that nitwit that's running around a building trying to figure out which side is up and which side is down. We'll just keep calling him Tweak. Yeah, Tweak. Twerp. Twink. The biggest names. The best talent. This is Neil Rogers. Sports Radio 560 QAM. The sports leader. This is Brady Quinn. Whenever I shave my balls, I listen to the Neil Rogers 12 to 1 hour. It's been a long time since they've rocked and rolled, but now they're back. It's the Led Zeppelin Last Step on the Stairway to Heaven Tour. Robert Plant, Jimmy Page, John Paul Jones, together again, playing all the songs they can still remember, like What a Whole Lot of Metamucil, Miracle Ear Communication Breakdown, Hard Face Finger, When the Serenity Adult Undergarment Breaks, Cashmere Cardigan Sweater, Hey, Hey, What Did You Say, and many more. Led Zeppelin, Last Step on the Stairway to Heaven Tour, tickets on sale now, ask about an AARP discount. 693 vote on the poll. We're going to make that 750 if it's the last thing we do. You'll see. I think we could shoot for, uh, I don't know, about 2 million. What do you say? Oh, sure. Years after he led a revolution that overthrew the government of Fulgencio Batista, Batista. Fidel Castro is stepping down today. Now, the, the Castro's message... Now, now, let me ask you this question. This guy's name is Morgan Neal. He looks as Anglo as anybody I've ever seen in my life. Why is he saying Fulgencio Batista? Why is he doing that? You know, People do that. Television. Why? I, I don't uh, know news. why. Everywhere now, what has been the, the, the reaction? Well, so far, uh, it's been fairly subdued among some of the people we've talked to, simply because they say they they they've seen an, a year and a half now with Raúl Castro uh, at head of the country, albeit provisionally. We were told, uh, and a lot of them are saying that this was this was the wise decision, given that Fidel Castro's age, given that his condition, uh, that this is the best decision that could be taken. Now, a lot of the young people we've talked to said. They're not too concerned who holds the titles at the top of power. What they want to know is who's going to make the changes that they've been asking for over and over, and, and increasingly in, in recent weeks, Betty. All right. Have you wow, great. 
So, in other words, there's much to do about nothing. <laughs> Fidel Castro's decision not to seek re-election as president may be just the break his brother Raul has been waiting for to make significant changes in the island's economy. Although Raul has been ruling Cuba for 19 months, Castro has been ailing. He's been ailing. Cuba watchers say he's had his hands tied with the looming presence of his brother. And with today's announcement that Cuba's 81-year-old leader was stepping down after nearly 50 years in orifice, Raul could use the opportunity to enact economic reforms that Cubans so desperately crave. I don't think it'll be more of the same, dissident economist Oscar Espinosa Chepe said by phone from Havana. It's not what we in Cuba want. We want democracy and freedom. But this could be the time for some economic changes and maybe long-term some political changes. Yeah, democracy and freedom, that's what we want in the U.S., eh? That's what we used to have once upon a time, or at least some of it. Castro announced in a letter to the Cuban people today his health will not allow him to accept another term as president. Eh? His move came five days before the National Assembly meets to elect the new council of state and its president. In his letter, Fidel acknowledged his failing health means he was not up to the job. It would be a betrayal of my conscience to accept a I already read that. This, I say, devoid of all drama, your mama. Cubans in Miami took the news in stride, dismissing Castro's resignation as an insignificant development while maintaining hope for future change. In Africa, visiting President Bush said he hoped this was the beginning of democracy. That's right, we're, gonna re- uh, we're exporting democracy all over the world, whether you want it or not. And if you don't want our brand of democracy, we're going to invade your country and kill a million people. How do you like uh, that? That's right. Democracy we're right pushing your ass. The question really should be, what does this mean for the people in Cuba, Bush said? They're the ones who suffered under Fidel Castro. They're the ones who were put in prison because of their beliefs. They're the ones who've been denied their right to live in a free society, he said. Like he knows something about that. But most Cubans believe that the presidency will wind up in the hands of Raul, the world's longest-serving defense minister. This is Raul's opportunity to consolidate power, said uh, Espinosa. Who's that? Is that uh, the jockey Espinosa? Victor? Yeah, sure. Laura Polan, I wonder if she's related to Lori Poulan, the uh, harness driver. Lori Polan, remember the dissident group Ladies in White, said this is Raul's chance to prove that he's really interested in reform by freeing more than 200 political prisoners in Cuba. Polan's husband, Hector Masada, Masada is serving a 20-year sentence. I wonder if Hector Masada knows Isabel de Casada. Isabel de Casada. Isabel de Casada. Oh, my God. Now he'll feel more like president, she said. He hasn't felt like the president. They never introduced him as the interim leader. They call him chief of the armed forces. He knows that while Fidel is alive, Fidel will always be the one giving orders, even from the shadows. He's lurking in the shadows, baby. It remains to be seen whether the 76-year-old Raul will be elected as new president, although Castro is widely expected to retain a strong voice in the country's strategic decisions for the time being. Raul may also be able to uh, wield power from his current positions and allow the Council of State to choose a younger leader, like the ones Castro alluded to in t- t- today's letter. You following this? Nope. No. The government has periodically released videos and snapshots of Fidel looking at first frail and gaunt and later more healthy. His signature military fatigues have been... I already read that. It's boring. Boring, man. Same old, same old, baby. To hell with Fidel. You know, when he dies, that's when they'll have the big parade. Remember they were all whipped up about that for a while there? Mm-hmm. He was dying. and uh, He had, uh, like, what's his name? Like Hyman Roth. He's been dying of the same heart attack for 20 years. <laughs> Remember that? That's right. That's a very good uh, comparison. Like yeah, my mom right. died of the same heart attack that's before I was correct. born. Like my mother, she kept saying, I think I'm on the way out now. And then finally she was. Oh, God. What a nudge. Hayward, California police and federal investigators did the grunt work and it paid off. They tracked down and arrested a cell phone caller believed to a phone emergency 911 number more than 27,000 times, making bodily noises, muttering in a disguised voice, and pressing the beep tone. <laughs> All right. Oh, I can't imagine what those bodily noises might have been. That might have been one of them. On Wednesday night, police arrested John Triplett, 45, of Hayward, on suspicion of abusing the 911 emergency line, a misdemeanor punishable by a $1,000 fine and or six months in jail. He completely overwhelmed our system, said Desi Calasada, manager of the Hayward Communications Center, which operates 9-11. He delayed the answering of other 911 calls because we were busy answering his. It all started last May when the California Highway Patrol's Communications Center in Vallejo began receiving copious 911 calls from a mysterious caller using a T-Mobile cell phone. Over a seven-month period, the caller placed 17,000 calls to the CHP. I wonder if one of the calls was, Hi, Prozac. You think? I imagine. Could have been. 
The caller would make various noises, including grunts and other bodily noises, minimal conversation in the disguised voice, beeps from the touchpad, etc., according to Lieutenant Chris Ory, a spokesman for the spokeswoman for the Haywood Police Department. No relation to Don Ory, who used to play for the Boston Bruins. Number 26. In a single week, the center received 1,327 calls from the same phone, inflating the number of incoming calls by 30%. 30, man! Then Calsada and Hayward Police Detective Bill Alexander contacted the FCC, which can track 9-11 frequencies and pinpoint a single caller's location. But before he was nabbed, the caller managed to grunt in another 10,000 calls to the police, as well as 4,000 to the Solano County Sheriff's Department, or he said in a written statement. Another 10,000. Do you understand what we're talking about here? I have no line. Wow. When the investigators finally located the cell phone in Triplett's home in the 24,000 block of Amador Street, Triplett apologized for making the calls. His explanation for the calls, Triplett told police, because it's free. How do you like that? It's free, baby. In other words, if it's free, it's me. Right. And don't call me today, Rimmer. Leave me alone. i got a lot of big plans today. I have no idea what they are, but I'll make some. I'll invent some. You know what I mean? Right. Why does he bother me? Why does he keep bugging me? Oh. Bop, 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 bop. I'll, I'll never understand people like that, ever. I mean, well, what is it that I can say? Yeah. I don't want to be around anybody that doesn't want to be around me, so I don't understand how other people uh, are okay with that. Oh, now, sometimes I'd like to be around some people who, you know, don't want to be around me, but they run fast. I see. Well, you know. A little different, yeah. Yeah, that's a different kind of being around. And he sure as hell ain't one of them. Bye, Rimmer. Have a good game tonight, baby. Hope the Leafs win, like, 10-zip. Columbus Straight Jackets, my ass, you know. 705 votes on the Jesus pool. Chris has got uh, high hopes for 800, right? Something like that. Maybe, let's see, did Eric do the other one? Oh, yeah. Let's change it now. They don't like the Jesus poll, and we've done it before anyway. Now, how many votes did we do on the Jesus poll the first time we've done it? 814. No, I don't want to wait that long. Do you? No. no. <laughs> well, I think the Castro poll is a little more timely than Jesus, for Christ's sakes. Hey, it's always time for Jesus. Is it? Jesus Christ. It's Jesus time. Tell that to uh, Twerp there, Tweak. Tell him at 2 o'clock it's Jesus time. For Christ's sake. Get him in there. Get his that. What a moron. And then he goes ahead and blames us. Oh, but see, that's why you should have bitch slapped that idiot. And in you, you're always to everybody's face. Oh, yeah. Hi, what? Eric. So I nice s- to meet you, baby. I you said it on the air. That's what got you him. mad at me. Why are you saying this now? That's what got you mad at me this morning. Is because I was because reading them you, both on the air. Because you started and my ass wasn't even on the yet. I know. In their face, on the air, to their face, the both of them. Communista, communista. That was my vote. And also, somebody said it won't change a thing. We got the new poll up there. What's your take on Castro's resignation? Communista, communista, it won't change a thing. I don't give a damn, or it's great. In the sunshine state. The best talent. Neil Rogers. Sports Radio 560 QAM. The sports leader. Neil God. Hello, I'm Hillary Clinton. Do you have problems controlling your husband? Boy, I did until I got. The Clinton Collar. You media people just want Obama to win because he's black. Ow, 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 ow! (laughs) See what I mean? Anytime Bill says something stupid that can hurt my campaign, I just give him a little shock. Did you see him snub my wife? Did you? He snubbed my... Ow, ow, ow! Oh, oh, oh! Shut up, Bill! The Clinton collar works just like a dog training collar. Attach it to his neck, and he's under my control. Oh, ow! Oh, hell! Ow! Ow! (laughs) So when people ask me if I can control my husband, I say sure thing, thanks to the Clinton collar. I'm Hillary Clinton, and I approve this method. Ow! Ow! Please, Hillary, stop! Communista, communista has got three votes on a new poll. I like that. That's my favorite. It's really... Incredible. 1216 at 560 WQM. Don't forget the Jack Show comes up today following this one about, I don't know, 203, 205. Whenever Eric, whatever his name is, Tweak. Yes. Now, now wouldn't you think today of all days that he's going to be in there for sure after all the uh, chewing out and all the uh, angst? He was there yesterday. He was what? He was there yesterday, but, of course, you know, there was a, a major production involved. What do you mean by that? I told you, that's when Clarence came in here like four or five times, you know, making sure that, oh my you know, God. that we as were going to do our right thing. As if. Oh, if we would just learn how to end the show, you know something, maybe we ought to stop doing that at the end of the show. I, I offered. 
And he said that, uh, no, that's all. Been... And i got to do a Joyce pretty quick here, man. Next, uh, break, catch make, next break, make him a little bit early, Chris. No worries. Because all of a sudden, Joyce is welling up inside my colon. Oh, my God. Yeah, well, God. And, and Joyce herself. Mohammed Al-Fayed branded Prince Philip a Nazi and a racist in the high court yesterday as he detailed his belief that his son, Duty and Diana, princes of Wales, uh. w- Wales, were murdered in a conspiracy initiated by the royal family and carried out with the involvement of Tony Blair, the security services, and others. By the end of his day in court, uh. Fayed's listed participants in the alleged murder plot and cover-up encompassed Diana's sister, Sarah McCorkadale, and her husband, Robert Fellows, two former chiefs of London police, the British ambassador to France, driver Henri Paul, two French toxicologists, a partridge in a pear tree, members of the French medical service, three bodyguards he once employed, and several of the princess's closest friends. All of these things. Wow. In a letter to the Intelligence and Security Committee in February 2006, Fayette said that such a momentous and horrific action would have been directly sanctioned by the Prime Minister. Parts of the letter were read aloud yesterday. Richard Horwell, QC. What is QC? I don't know. Acting at the inquest for the Metropolitan Police Commissioner asked Fayette to confirm the list of conspirators, those who are involved in this, can we add Tony Blair to this list? And Fayette replied, you can. The Herod's owner repeated the court his claims that Diana was killed because she was pregnant at the time of her death and that she and Duty had planned to announce their engagement. Diana told me on the telephone she was pregnant, he told the inquest. I was the only person that they told. A couple called him to announce their intention to marry an hour before the crash, Fayette said, but he later seemed unclear about whether he had been told his son was about to propose or that duty had done so and Diana had accepted. He said the princess's friends who told the inquest there was no way she could have been pregnant or contemplating um, remarriage were lying and said all the witnesses who had been saying this as a part of the cover-up had been told what to say. He said Diana told him she knew Prince Philip and Prince Charles were trying to get rid of her a month before the crash. Fayed named a photographer, James Adnanson, as the most likely suspect to have carried out the murder on the orders of the security services. Adnanson's body was found in a burnout car in 2000, and he's believed to have committed suicide. It was an accident, and somebody got hurt. The inquest already heard that Adnanson had produced enough evidence to show that he was at home in Ligny, 177 miles south of the French capital, at the time of the crash. There was one paparazzi member in the pay of security services. This is likely to have been James Addison, who exacted the murder in his own fiat, pushed the car into strobe light, having been used to blind Henri Paul, Fayette said. A steel wall from the security services prevented him from providing proof of all his claims. I've been fighting for ten years to be where we are today, he told the jury. He's pissed off and fired up. The only problem is nobody cares. You care about Prince Diana, princess? No. She's dead, right? It's time to send Philip back to Germany, where he came from, Fayette said. You know his original name. It ends with Frankenstein. Ian Burnett, QC for the coroner, asked Fayette if his allegations stem from your belief that Prince Philip is not only a racist, but a Nazi as well. Absolutely, Fayette replied. Absolutely. Charles participated in the hope that he would then be able to marry his long-term mistress, Camilla Parker Bowles, Fayette said. Fayette dismissed suggestion that Diana's previous relationship with a Muslim heart surgeon, Hasnat Khan, was serious, saying he was just a friend. Maybe some relations, how can she marry someone like that who lives in a council flat and has no money? Yeah, some piker like that. How is she going to marry a schlepper like that? Yeah. Fayette said the conspiracy was coordinated for Philip from the British Embassy in Paris by the Queen's private secretary, fellow Sir Michael J., the then British ambassador to France, was also in. Everybody was involved. I was involved. George was involved, and I think Chris was in on it, too. Chris was calling the shots. And you know what? That's where, what's his name? That's where Tweek was at the time. That's why he wasn't on the board. And he was in the tunnel going, oogity boogity. Yeah, and that's, that's why right. He was going, oogity boogity Diana to Henri Paul, the drunken <laughs> frog driver. Oh, there's Swillery. After a year, the way I judged what I did was whether or not I'd helped people. Whether or not I'd made a difference. Oh, uh, yeah. Way. Squirt a few more for us, Swillery. Come on, squirt a few. Yeah. Changing it back to booby yeah. vision. What? I'm changing it back to booby vision. Well, I tell you, if she gets whomped in uh, Wisconsin tonight, I, I don't know what's going to happen. Because the polls are all over the place, like they always are lately. But if she gets whomped tonight, man, it's going to be nine in a row. And in and Honolulu, you know she's going to lose in Hawaii. So that's going to be ten. Ten in a row. It's a bad streak, honey. A bad streak. Just like the mean streak in your husband that he's displaying all over the place lately. Forty-seven votes on our new poll. Now, if we add these to the first one, can we make, what can we make? Chop liver? Something like that. Ow, ow. What do we have on the first one? Seven or five. Oh, like I said, we can make 800. Anybody care about that? No. They're going to write it down in uh, the Guinness Book of Records? Uh, no! What's your take on Castro's resignation? That's our very important poll. Then I'm going to run in Joyce, man. I'm going to race down the hall. 
and unleash it all. Really? At least try. All well, right. So if I'm not back, you know, of course, we'll, you know me. We'll I'll cover, be back. right. You're, you're always back. But I'm always back with plenty of time. We'll be ready anyway. It won't change a thing, Castro's resignation. That's what 20 people say so far. That's the obvious correct answer, right? Right. I don't give a damn, 15. But I voted. Comunista, comunista, nine, noventa, nueve. What did I say, noventa? Nueve. Whatever. Yeah, who cares, okay? Nobody's Speak it in English, baby. Speak it in English. And it's great. Three. Nine. I got, well, Robert Griefer's not here anymore, so I couldn't, nine. I couldn't get it out right. Now, where did he wind up going off to? Actually, he ended up uh, staying here, and he's working for the city of Miami or something like that, and still working here occasionally. What? Yep. Still working on QAM, Robert Creeper, the Grim Reaper, the Lord of the Board? Yeah, he did a uh, mandate show yesterday, I think. He did mandate show yesterday. Well, I hope they had a good time. Your biggest name. The best talent. This is Neil Rogers. Sports Radio 560 QAM. The sports leader. Ian's dumb as dirt. You know, the country's in bankruptcy, and when I listen to this argument, I mean, I find it rather silly. We should be debating foreign policy. There's this guy who's running, we don't know him still. Who is Ron Paul? Who is Ron? Are you there during debates? I can't tell. Who is Ron Paul? Who is How Ron? Are we have those Just what are your views? You know, the 70s were horrible. I never see you on the news. I hate to break it to you, but I think you're going to lose. Who is Ron Paul? Who is Ron? And we have these silly arguments going on about who said what where. Republican or Democrat, does anybody know? Who is Ron Paul? Who is Ron? Can you play the guitar on the Tonight Show? Who is Ron Paul? Who is Ron? No. <laughs> Do you really exist? When will you see you in a caucus? You're aiming for the White House, but I think you're going to miss. Who is Ron Paul? Who is Ron? Where's the money going to come from? Trump <laughs> 28 at 560 WQM. In honor of uh, Lincoln's birthday and President's Day yesterday, I just uh, dropped a Lincoln log. Wow. Aren't you proud? Aren't Did you, you measure it? Well, we can get a whole bunch more of them. We can, like, build a log cabin. Ooh, and be a Republican. 68 votes on the new poll there. What, what do we got? We got 800 yet? No. We're getting there, though, right? Right. I'm not asking you. I'm asking the pollmeister. Uh-huh. 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 What a lunk. We got the lunk, and then uh, Jax, he's got the skunk. A stench of manure emanates from that control room chair in, that, in the big studio there. Well, that's from Josh. I'm not Friedman. talking about Josh Friedman either. Well, I'm sure he left uh, plenty behind. Oh yeah. I'm talking about your good close buddy Eric Twerp Tweak uh, Twink uh, Stink. And we haven't even started partying. What are you talking about? Oh, I'm sure we're going to go partying at some point. Bonnie. Who, you and Eric? And uh, and Jax and the whole Guns and the Ha. What the hell are you talking about? <laughs> Nothing nonsense. A Washington Post out editor killed a story on a New Orleans madam who alleged she arranged tryst for Louisiana Senator David Vitter, Republican of Louisiana, a Post gossip columnist said. Post gossip guru Amy Arketzinger arranged an interview with a madam in New Orleans after Vitter admitted his name appeared on. What, what is this madam crap? Okay, what, what is uh, that? I don't know. McGuire. Admitted his name appeared on the phone records of a D.C. madam. Speaking to the Washington City Papers, Eric Wimple. In an article published Friday, she said her editor, Steve Reese, spiked the story on sourcing grounds. Reese was aware that everyone else was writing about her, but said we can't use that as an excuse. In essence, that the Post had to take the higher moral ground, Argett Singer said in an email. Next day, she said she found the article on the Post website, which reported the same allegations in an AP story. The DC gossip maven wasn't mad, according to the interview. I guess I was arguing, look, the Post already tainted here, she said, but claims that the Post executive editor, Len Downey, agreed with Weiss. The tidbit, which appeared in the larger story about the Post, was first caught by Big Head D.C., a Washington, D.C. blog. There ain't nothing like Big Head D.C. So, so what, did that, what did that just say? I don't know. Big Head. They killed the story about uh, the Republicans. Well, we already know he's a prevert. He's screwing around. Another phony baloney, finger-pointing whoremeister. That's all. All the same, man. Mm -hmm. They like it. They want it. They're doing it. And they talk uh, a bunch of crap. Talk a bunch of caca. Kaka. I think we're going to sneeze now, too. Boy, it's coming out of all ends now. Well, it's a good Must thing you already got that Joyce out of the way, or else. 
Oh, that's true. When you sneeze in and you, oh, yeah. Hit. And you're right on the verge. God only knows what kind right. of un ungodly things. Christine Pelosi, daughter, speaking of ungodly, daughter of the Speaker and more notably at the moment a superdelegate, warns of a massive disillusionment of voters should the Democratic Party officials back a presidential nominee who didn't win the pledged delegate vote. Amen to that. We're going to have a revolution, baby, if, that, if they pull that crap. Superdelegates, you know what that is? Party hacks. Right. Party hacks. Hacks. In other words, all you millions of people come out and vote and get all whipped up, and then no matter what you say, we're going to decide, because we're the party hacks. Many of us are elected by the grassroots of the party, she said, and I can't imagine going home in November to, look to those people and try to phone, uh, to phone bank some for someone. Oh, brother. I can't imagine going home in November to those people and try to phone bank for someone who did not capture the pledge delegate vote. We were all galvanized by what happened to Al Gore in Florida. Pelosi, who's been a DNC member since 1996 and recently authored the book Campaign Boot Camp, acknowledged being heavily a petition from campaign surrogates but declined to say for whom she would vote. She did, however, list different attributes uh, upon which her superdelegate vote will be based. Who's building upon a base of volunteers? Who's bringing the party together? The best indicators of future performance? That sounds like Barack Obama to me. You know what I'm saying? I have no life. Mm -hmm. Absolutely correct, sir. And that, too. I have no life. that, too. In her interview with the Huffington Post, she spoke freely and at length with some of the challenges facing the 796 superdelegates as the presidential nomination seemingly falls into their laps. What, for instance, should the party do about the primary elections in Michigan and Florida, which did not, according to DNC rules, carry any delegates for which the victorious Hillary Clinton campaign is hoping to have counted? It's always nice to have a bunch of delegates uh, counted when there was nobody else running against you. Like in Michigan, nobody else's name on a ballot. Of course they should be involved. I can't imagine a scenario personally where they're not. The question is how, said Pelosi. She then playfully suggested a novel idea, splitting the state's delegates 50-50 to Obama and Clinton, in which she argued allow for representation from each state while not changing the dynamics of the race in one candidate's favor. Of course, she added, ideally we sit back and let the process do its will, and by the time you get to June, it won't matter. By the time you get to June, it won't matter. And that is, of course, if Obama wins tonight, Hawaii and Wisconsin. And then next week, wouldn't that be something if you upset her in Texas? Too many uh, Julios, though. Too many of those Mexicans, man. Yeah. What? You huh? picking on Mexicans again? Not me. You'll be very pleased to know, man, that Paco Taco, since this is his lunch hour, is going to driving school tonight. I'm uh, alleged. very pleased to know. Alleged. Both right? that, that he went to school and that he's going to driving school. Well, wouldn't that be something? Two school, two schools in one day. I'm even excited he's getting the acne taken care of. On a school day? Not that. I mean, uh, you'd think that that could wait, but still. No. Well, why do you care about that? Hey, because it makes you happy, man. <laughs> I don't care if he's got acne or not. What difference does it make to me? It makes him happy. And if oh, he's happy, I see. you're happy. I see. Well, you know, you're I happy, I'm my, happy. You I spent my works. whole life trying to make everybody else happy. I'm not happy, but I spent my whole life trying to make everybody else happy. I'm sure a lot of you people listening to me right now uh -huh. can relate to that. Uh-huh. And George. Uh-huh. We don't have to be happy. That's not important. Okay? No. In fact, it rarely That's occurs. Right. But, boy, we've got to work our asses off trying to make sure that everybody sure. else is happy. Is everybody happy now? Come on, let's hear it. I'll let you know when I get there if you let me know when you do. Oh, well, yeah. Don't, don't hold your breath. I won't. In fact, last night I was so not happy because, you know, I send to the professor an email every night in the MySpace mm -hmm. thing. And, by the way, bitch, whoever the bitch is that sent me a long song to dance, uh, you people on MySpace that think I'm going to put these things on there, all these ads, you know, Oh, she got I'm, spammed I'm, then if it's an ad. Is it? She got uh, fished. Really? People don't send ads on purpose. Somebody got their password, they got fished, yeah. and then they send well, ads them. out in people's names. Yeah, yeah go fish. Uh, go fish. <laughs> so anyway, I sent a, uh, a short and very depressing um, email to the professor, and I'm laying in bed at like 10 to 11, and my Blackberry, the phone rings. And it was him. Wasn't that sweet? Mm-hmm. Trying to like, you know, calm me down, bring me back to earth. And then good. he said, "Oh, by the way, if you want to take some of those pills now, it's a good idea because I'm still in the will. pill rhymes with will. <laughs> sure, where there's a will, no, there's a pill. He didn't say that. Yeah, where there's a will, there's a dead guy. Lane, and I'm, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to say that hasn't crossed my mind every now and then because it's been a, it's been a brutal. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, don't. Don't what? Don't do it. Why not? You're too young. I'll do whatever I want to do. How do you like that? But what if you don't want to? The sun is shining, though. Well, I, I don't want to, not right now. sun is shining a little bit, speaking through the clouds. I'm going to tell you, this winter has been really crap here. 
I'm not going to lie to you. Oh, it's minus 8, so it's also cold as hell. Christ. Christ on a crutch. And where did that expression ever come from, Christ on a crutch? Well, I don't know, but I mean? like it. Yeah. Everybody knows that it was Santo Lazaro who had the crutch. Who? Lazarus. Lazarus sounds like some Jewish guy. Probably was, weren't they all? Yeah. Baruch Adonai. You know, we have one dropout. It was much earlier, though, on the um, streaming. Much earlier. And I didn't have any complaints because I haven't heard from our close friend Brandon yet today, so I haven't heard, ah, the streaming's down, you know, or anything else, good or bad or indifferent. Hey, congratulations. That's fine, you know, I understand. Yesterday was a holiday, so people who work today, they got to make up for it. They were screwing off yesterday. Right? Like you. You had to work. Right. Alleged, but from what I hear. And what were you telling me about the Suds came in? Was that yesterday or Friday? Yeah, he came in at noon. At noon? So that yeah. got you off the hook. That's right. Did it screw up all your arrangements? No, it was all part of the arrangements. Oh, good. Good thinking. Speaking of crutches, you know. It screws up all my arrangements. <laughs> oh. Hey, Neil. Yes. Congratulations. On what? I just sent you an email from uh, Talkers Magazine. You're uh, number 76 in the top 100. Oh, great. Drop hey. it like a rock. I used to be number 15. That and a dime will get you a cup of coffee at Sambo's. Yeah. And uh, Mandage got a mention for uh, Sports Talk. What do you mean got mentioned? They have, like, the top 101 to 250 in what category. What did you send this to? Uh, your Yahoo. Oh. Yeah. So, uh, Manage was mentioned as one of the uh, top sports talk hosts. One new. Here comes Chris Whalen. Top 100 talkers. Let's see. I used to be 15, then I was 50-something, and now I'm down to 76. Dropping like a, a rock, like a whale. Like a whaling? Oh, look at that. Tweak told me about it, huh? Well, tell him to go tweak his ass. The Heavy 100, look at that. Rush Limbaugh, number one. Sean Hannity. Michael Savage, a Nazi. Dr. Laura Schlesinger, another Nazi bitch. Glenn Beck, another one. Laura Ingraham, another one. Don Imus. Ed Schultz, Mike Gallagher, never heard of him. Neil Bortz, terminally coma-inducing. Bill O'Reilly, Bill O. Dave Ramsey, never heard of him. Howard Stern is number 13. Wow. Man cow. His I like his audience in South oh, Florida. Oh, Point. oh. Yeah. Doesn't even make the needle move on the Richter scale. Mark Levin. Never heard of him. Alan Combs. Oh, yeah, sure. Opie and Anthony, 17th. Joe Madison, 18th. How the hell do I get down to 76? Oh, Lionel is number uh, 31. Tom don't like us, 31. With those stupid shades. What a jackass. Oh, my God. Ron Owens on KGO, who's one of the best. He's number 50. So I don't feel so bad now. Ron Owens is great. He's probably 100 years old now, like me. 76, Neil Rogers, WQM, an icon in South Florida Talk Radio. Mid-mornings on Miami Sports Outlet. How embarrassing. And it's got the, uh, what, what's that phone number? What is that telephone number? I don't know. The hotline? <laughs> Maybe that's the number for that fag uh, radio uh, company in Frisco, huh? You think? Could be. So I'm just below Fred Hansberger, which I never heard of, and just above Roy Kahn. Sounds like a real con job to me. Oh, Jim Phillips in Orlando. He's 78. I beat you, Jim. How do you like that? Phil Henry, 79. Beat him by three. Are you sure? Unique entertainer bringing theater of the mind and to issues and uh, issue whatever it says. It says a bunch of crap. Boy. And then a bunch of people nobody ever heard of after that. Well, I beat out Phil Henry. How do you like them apples? How big deal? So there's the Heavy 100 Talkers Magazine, one of the biggest pieces of garbage. Even if they may be number one with four bullets, I would still say Talkers Magazine. It's just, it's just you know, a self-indulgent bunch of crap for people in the business who want to sit around. Oh, there's my picture. My name got in the... Yeah, like that. But thanks a lot, Tweak, and you're still an idiot. Biggest names. The best talent. This is Neil Rogers. Sports Radio 560 QAM. The Sports Leader. You know, right now I am ahead in both the popular vote and uh, in delegates. I hope I stay there. I believe that I am attracting new voters. We all came out to go vote. The presidency on the line. Hillary was ahead for a long while. And McCain won the other side. All the women and their mothers. We're hoping Clinton got the crown. But college kids think Barack is the one. And 
they came pouring out to vote for Obama. Hillary just cried. I see what's happening. Vote for Obama. I really hope that Senator Obama will quit. <laughs> okay, then. Just an abrupt ending there. I don't blame her. 14 to 1 at 560 WQM. Happy Tuesday, baby. When's the next holiday? When's Purim? We've already been through that in March. March uh, 13th. Really? You got it marked on the calendar? And now that the uh, court, now, so it's official, Corky's is uh, finito, all of them? No more Corky's? Uh, I think that's what we heard, yeah. That's the end of South Florida. It's over, baby. It's all over. When the one in North Miami Beach closed its doors, that was that was not the beginning of the end, but that was like one of the final chapters. Mm-hmm. And that was the one where we huh? Pembroke Pines, they moved. And then they closed, right? That's what we heard. What and you want to know why? Why? Too many glam. Ah. That's the problem in South Florida, man, changing demographic. All the old Jews, they moved to Boca. Hey, we went there all the time when we lived by there, but then we moved away. That's true. Like yeah, I Pembroke said, Pines changing located. demographics. Mm-hmm. Who the hell wants to live uh, in Dave County? Chris. Now, why well, do you yeah. live in Dave County? Is there no, a special Pembroke, reason Pembroke for that? Pines. Oh, Chris, he can't afford not to. Yeah. What do you mean you can't afford not to? What does that mean? Well, I'm not getting paid enough to be able to move at the moment. You you know how it is with radio producers and board ops. You mean like uh, tw- maybe you could move in with Twerk. That's twerk. okay. Tweak. Maybe he'd like to give you a little tweak. And then you see if he makes a squeak. So what did he say when he came in there and gave you the song to dance about uh, talk radio? He came about in and them. said that uh, they need to switch the studio thing again because they have to do something. And to congratulate you for being in the top 100. <coughs> Hey, hey, hey. What? I'm going to tell Joyce on you. Those were raspberries, man. Oh, I didn't know. A bunch of fruits. Oh, there's uh, Pinhead uh, Dana Bash again. You that it is election day. God, it's just amazing to me the people that they put on television. Just astonishing. She's got a head for, um, I don't know, for Borneo or somewhere. She's got a shrunken head. Dave Lindorf on the Smirking Chimp says the Bush Cheney administration takes this for idiots. Anybody who thinks that the government is telling the truth about the plan to shoot down a dead spy satellite, it's going to be Thursday, I believe, That's it, that it's all about protecting us and not about testing an anti-satellite weapon. It has to be really stupid. And stupid is what the Bush administration and the Pentagon apparently think we are. They're claiming that we they need to shoot this thing down because it's got a tank with a 1,000 pounds of hydrazine, a fuel used for maneuvering satellites while in orbit, which is said to be toxic as chlorine if breathed. Well, the odds of a tank of hydrazine surviving an 18,000-mile-an-hour plunge into the atmosphere intact and making it to the ground is basically zero. That sucker will heat up to a fine red-hot glow and blow up before it even makes it to the stratosphere. If you want to know how likely it is that such a tank would make it to the ground, check out the pieces of the space shuttle Columbia that made it back to Earth when it came down in pieces. That shuttle, a damn sight bigger than the spy satellite, included some heavy pieces of equipment like landing gear that had to carry the full weight of the vehicle on the tarmac, and even that, that stuff got toasted. The shuttle also contained tanks of hydrazine, by the way, which did not make it to the Earth. No, the risk of this spy satellite toxifying anyone is nil. The risk of pieces of it, which might make it to the Earth, hitting anybody of consequence, is next to nil, especially as the government will be able to give pretty precise warning to the impact area well in advance of its final descent. All you got to do is, if they tell you it's going to be near us, you go outside, you look up in the uh, air, and you yell, The sky is falling! Like that. And everybody uh, runs for cover. So what this is really all about is the government getting an excuse to violate the International Treaty Against Weapons in Space to test a missile that it has hopes can take out a satellite. The Chinese did this last year to one of their own satellites to widespread condemnation from other spacefaring nations, including the USA. Oh, there's Bill Schneider. Maybe he knows something. Some inroads in Latino voters and some of the others that she's really counting on. It appears to be exactly what's happening, but keep something else in mind. Texas has an incredibly complicated system for assigning delegates. I'm not sure I can explain it. I'm not sure I understand it. I don't know how many people do. But in Texas, when you pick delegates, you're really supposed to vote twice. You have to show up at the polling place and vote in the primary. And if and only if you have voted in the primary, then you can also go to a caucus the very same night and pick additional delegates. One-third of the delegates are picked at caucuses that very same night. Well, I understand that, don't you? Not. Whatever. The only difference between the U.S. and China here is that the Chinese at least have the integrity to violate international law frontally. The U.S. has to do it dishonestly, pretending it's a public service. Let's not let's at least not be willing stooges here. Do, 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 do. He says stooges. Nothing worse than being a stooge, you know what? Right. Do, 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 do. Nope. 
We've had eight years of government by lying. It's not that lies and deception weren't practiced by governments before the advent of the Cheney Bush regime, but this administration, more than any other before, clearly believes that democracy and integrity are simply obstacles to power and has worked assiduously to try to eliminate them entirely from Washington. That's one of my favorite words, assiduously, as opposed to saying hard. Right? right. I, mean, you can, I don't think Joyce likes to say hard anyway. Nah, right? You can't that, say hard. But it's it's that. that's a pseudo-intellectual word. It's past time to bring a little integrity and open his back, says Dave Lindorf on the smirkling chimp. Attaboy, Dave. You go, baby. Look at that. Te a likely Texas Democratic primary voter satisfied if Clinton wins 79%, if Obama wins 79%. You can't get much closer than that, right? It's tight. Right. It's really tight, baby. Speaking of quirkies, 20 years ago it would have been difficult to call more than a handful of American cities great restaurant towns. There were New York and New Orleans, of course, and Los Angeles. Chicago and San Francisco were pretty exciting, too. But after that, list got lean with cities that had many good restaurants, but not enough depth and innovation in fine dining, and not, not enough breadth in ethnic and regional food categories. Today, however, most major cities in the U.S. have the kind of gastronomic diversity and regionality that is rich in something, and the rest of the article's not there. Well, don't you oh, hate when that Damn happens? it, I do. <laughs> it didn't print out. Well, I have to go back to this again. This is too good to pass up, to pass over. That is rich in, uh, and that's it. Oh, I hate that. I very seldom do that, but you know, sometimes I do do antioxidants. I take antioxidants every good. day. Good. I take lots of good stuff. You were asking me the other day. I take my fish oil capsules. Right. I take my vitamin E. I take selenium. I take CoQ10. Good. And then of course I take my prescription drugs. I don't take as many drugs as you do, but then again. Right. I was going to say, I don't need them, but I do. We all no, have no. to have a hobby. I'm catching up here, I think. That's a good poll question. Who needs more drugs now, George or Neil? See, I need my hallucinogenic drugs now that my life has turned to crap, and also I need my prescription drugs because I'm ancient. Right. I got you, you know what, you, what? I'll send you some. Yeah, the yeah, likely story. Don't send me any drugs. I'll mark them as cough drops. <laughs> yeah, that'll do it. That worked like a charm that other time. I'm trying to get him to send me some of my prescription drugs. He writes cough drops on the on the hey. FedEx package. Needless to say, well, maybe the guy, maybe the uh, inspector had a cold. Maybe. Know? Or maybe he came in from out of the cold. I should have wrote crack. Eight, which should most... Oh, I would have got here then. ...but voted for Mitt Romney, who has endorsed him. But now conservatives in a southern state are voting for McCain, not Huckabee. And that is a breakthrough for John McCain. It certainly is, Bill, and when I guarantee you we are going to hear from the McCain campaign over dude, and over again dude. if those numbers hold up. Do you want to look at her? Look at giant cleavage on uh, Spickovision right now. I want me to change the channel. No, I didn't tell you to change it. Oh, okay. Well, no, what, what could I be watching other than this that would be very stimulating? You could watch Out TV, watch the Fag Channel. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Worship yeah. up the death of Dynasty. Questions from the audience? Maybe they have an idea. Oh, my God. Yeah. Katie, who you have? Hey, we got a question from Matthew for everyone. Oh, my God. It's actually really more of a comment. You know what, if you do well in the Oh, my network. God, look at Matthew's buddy there. Maybe, maybe you don't even know him. Holy cow. Holiday. Move that camera off to the uh, right there a little bit. Holy crapola, baby. Wow. You, you inspired me to do the right thing there. Why am I watching CNN when I could be watching some I mean, maybe hot people? It's the same crap over and over again anyway. Yeah, it's the same garbage, man, and the same tired faces. Dana Bash and Bill Schneider and Wolf Blitzkrieg and uh, even Jack Cafferty. I'm getting really tired of his sour attitude about life, even though he's right, but I'm, I'm just tired. Oh, come on, let's go back in the audience. Get off that fruitcake on the stage there. Let's go back out in the audience. Come on now. It's like when I was at Woodbine. In fact, I had a great weekend at Woodbine. Did I tell you that? No, I did not. Nope. One three grand. Ooh. That's just to rub it into the quarter slot guy, okay? I didn't play any quarter slots at one three grand. In fact, when the hell was it? It was yesterday, um it was Saturday night at midnight. I got the itch. Yeah. The bitch got the itch. And I got in the car and I drove out there and I got me a good machine, man. It gave me six hundred online, it gave me a spin for a thousand, gave me two spins for two fifty each. I was up like almost two grand and I ran out of there. So total for the weekend, I had a nice weekend. You know what? I'm gonna need it. Good. I'm going to need it when I'm out of work. Although I can't work for that gay uh, network, you know. That's right. And if you, you wind up on that channel you were just watching, if things go right. On OTV, yeah, I'm sure yeah. they're making the big bucks, yeah. My, my, my desperation for cash is much, and it's got nothing to do with gambling, by the way, is much greater than uh, somebody's, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Let's go back out in the audience and see that uh, queen there and his uh, buddy, his boyfriend. He only wishes. He swishes and he wishes. 
124 votes on the uh, Castro poll. What's your take on Castro's uh, resignation? You would have thought we'd have had 1,000 on here already, wouldn't you, yeah, Chris? Dunk it. Yeah, well, you know. What's our total now? 7 oh what? It was 7 oh five, and then what? So we got so 829. 829. We got a shot here at 900, I think. Easy, right? Uh -huh. That's cheating with two poles, but never let. What did you uh, say? Uh -huh. I said, uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Lunkhead. Oh, there's an interesting. Uh... <laughs> like to ask oh, yeah. Um, I'd like to think... ask you how I'm Oh, don't speak, though. <laughs> oh, my God. Have you ever seen guys like that? They look really. Well, you don't pay no. any attention. They look really, really interesting. Then they start speaking, you know. They look really butch and macho and like uh, regular guys. And then they start speaking like this, and the runaway ethics start running around. Oh, my God. Well, go catch them. What, I'd like to. What's your take on Castro's resignation? It won't change a thing. 59. I don't give a damn. 44. Comunista, Comunista, 14. And it's great. Solamente siete. Biggest names. The best talent. This is Neil Rogers. Sports Radio 560 QAM. The sports leader. Oh, this is Scott Farrell. And when I'm up in Boca Tica slapping old women with painted lips around the pool, I listen to the Neil Rogers one to two hours. I mean, I listen to the Neil Rogers there in balance one to two hours. You just got a naked man in the shower stall. All around the photo clouds, staring at my toes. We're straight guys up all the time About men who play games Can't keep their eyes off tight behind Insisting they're not gay Oh! You've got to hide your heart away Absolutely You've got to hide your heart away. Towel slots and hardly passes that straight gay old by Men who talk of other men is a sport for state of mind. No girls here, just sport for queers having fun. With the boys in the locker room, I hear boing, 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 boing. You've got to hide your heart away. You've got to hide your heart away. I just had a great idea, great inspiration, you know, at 2 o'clock when we end the show, which we've been doing 100 years on this station, mm. long before Tweak was ever born. Right. Maybe that would be it. Maybe I'll, because you know how you play something, and then I always drop in a little something at the end of it. Sure. Or close to the end of it. I'll just go. <laughs> and that'll be the cue to him. And if he can't figure that out, then too bad. See, the whole object before, I mean, before now, was to surprise the audience. Right, to be day. spontaneous yeah, and goofy and something nobody like knows, that. You know? Nobody knows what it's going to be. The audience nobody knows the trouble we've seen. Yeah. Like, like, every once in a while, today? I'll drop in one of these. I, yeah, I, right. I, I, we don't know. I, 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 yeah, I, we don't know I, until that last I, uh, bit I, I, what we're cooking. In fact, maybe we can start now and play these the rest of the hour. I, we could do a poll every day about I, what I, parting shot should we play at the end of the show. Farting shot? Yes. We play no farting shots. I wonder if it's okay for them to play farts on their show because it's a sports show. Oh, I doubt it. Although I doubt that athletes fart, you know. Can you even begin to imagine? Hey, what happens in the locker room stays so in the locker room. That's what I heard on this station. Some big, fat football players. Oh, my God. Can you even begin to imagine? I'd the aroma put you in a coma, man. Thank you, no. Wow. Woo! Amy Driscoll says, oh, and this is in the Herald. And you're going to assume it's about something that it's not. Because the headline says, Senate paddle to consider new rules for adult arcades. Now, when you hear the word adult arcade, what you comes always to your mind? think of porn. Right. Not. <coughs> it still pains adult arcade owner Gail Fontaine to talk about her 2005 arrest. I wonder if she's kin to Johnny Fontaine. You think? Gail Fontaine. Or maybe mm -hmm. she's kin to the Fontaine so uh, sisters. With the olive oil charm. Where's that thing? What's the matter with you? What, what's that called? I don't know. Which one are you looking for? 
I'm looking for where he slaps him in the face. And says, well, oh, here it is, right here. Where? Johnny Funk Day will no, never get that movie. I don't care how many Dago, Guinea, what greaseball goombas come out of the woodwork. But that was about Johnny Fontaine, so that counts. Right. Anyway, I'm a great grandmother. My family had to watch as I was handcuffed, she said, Gail Fontaine. And what was I doing? Helping senior citizens. A jury acquitted Fontaine the following year, apparently deciding that her business with its slot machine lookalike games that run for as little as eight cents a spin was more elderly clubhouse than cut rate casino. But now Fontaine's four arcade operations and about 200 others across Florida are back in legal crosshairs. A Senate committee set to meet today in Tallahassee will consider new regulations for businesses. A move Fontaine believes is aimed at shutting them down. For four years we've been fighting this fight, Fontaine said, standing next to the rows of electronic games at Johnny's Rec Room in Pompino Beach. But this is the most well-orchestrated. As Florida continues its drive toward more gambling, adult arcades and other so-called gray market games are coming under increased scrutiny by lawmakers trying to draw a line between illegal gambling and entertainment permitted by law. They have a lot to consider. The Florida gambling scene has changed dramatically in recent months. Vegas-style slot machines were approved in Dade County. The same type of slots are now spinning at the Seminole Tribe 7 casinos, and Blackjack is next. And then there's a Senate proposal that would expand slots, the less popular bingo-style machines, to 20 more horse and dog tracks in Highlight Frontines across the state. Florida's going to hell in a handbasket. The Lord is pissed off, baby. Bet on it. There are other arcade-related concerns, too. A new kind of electronic game called a sweepstakes arcade or internet arcade began proliferating rapidly about a year and a half ago. According to state regulatory officials, the businesses typically sell phone cards that come with sweepstakes entries. Customers can enter the numbers into desktop computers on site to determine whether they win prizes. You ever see? I never heard of that. Do you? No. Also in Hialeah, Mayor Julio Rabaina has set an initiative to crack down on the illegal use of electronic games. He says there are about a thousand in the city, and sometimes they're used for gambling. Oh, my God. Can you imagine gambling in Hialeah? Oh, why not? I mean, that's why they closed the track down. Or maybe because John Brunetti turned it into a toilet. That could have been that. This is one of those issues nobody wants to touch, nobody wants to talk about, nobody wants to face, Robaina said. Technology has created some of the problems. Slot machines have gone from one-armed bandits to digital devices with electronic display with screens that mimic the old spinning reels, and the versions made for amusement look nearly identical to those made for gambling. It's so gay, uh, gray these days, we're trying to make it a little more black and white, said Representative Carlos Lopez Cantera, a Miami Republican who chairs the House Business Regulation Committee. We're trying to protect people. Florida's adult arcades operate under the Chuck E. Cheese exemption in state gambling laws. The Chuck E. Cheese exemption. It deems well, arcades legal so long as the games require some skill and don't allow players to redeem points for money or booze. The Chuck E. Cheese exemption. Well, what does that mean? Uh... Because the, those kinds of places, like Chuck E. Cheese and other, let the children play for little tickets that they can then redeem for uh, really crappy little prizes. Well, what a nice thing that is to be teaching kids how to gamble. Right. Adult arcades like Fontaine's use video terminals with electronic displays that look like today's slot machines, but instead of cash jackpots, winners get gift cards or additional points for play. Big Mencia. Arcade operators also say that games require skill to play, while regular slot machines are purely games of chance. Want to bet? With arcade games, players punch a button to stop the reels. They can choose to stop some reels, let others continue in hopes of lining up a winning combination. Boy, I'd sure like to be able to do that on a good machine at Woodbine, man. You get, oh, you know what I got on a $5 machine last week one day? No, I don't. Now, first, let me preface it by saying that three wheels of fortune on the line is the jackpot, 382 grand. I got a wheel of fortune, wheel of fortune, blank. Wow. 125 bucks. Blank. I mean, anything with it is a nice payoff. Like a, a red seven would have been seventy-five hundred bucks. A five times would have been ten grand. And another wheel of fortune would have been one hundred eighty-three uh, hundred eighty-two grand. Wheel of fortune, wheel of fortune, blank. Isn't that depressing? No. I mean, yes. Well, why not? I'd have sent you a couple of bucks. Well, then it's very depressing. Lopez Cantera's committee, along with the Senate Regulated Industries Committee, plans to push for more regulation, especially when it comes to adult arcades. They are unregulated. No government agency regulates the payout structure. They're just taxed under sales tax. Law enforcement is very frustrated with this particular industry, Lopez Cantera said. His committee bill would limit prizes to a $5 value and end the use of gift cards as awards and change the definition of permissible games in a way that arcade advocates say would put them out of business. The Senate may offer its own arcade regulatory bill. Regulated Industries Chairman Dennis Jones, a Seminole Republican, called the arcades nothing more than slot machine barns. Well, excuse us, slot machine barns. 
The state-regulated Broward casinos are overseen by law enforcement and pay 50% of revenues to the state. He noted the arcades don't do neither neither. They don't want to, and they don't. There has to be some level of fairness to this. If you're saying electronic gaming has to be strictly regulated and licensed, and you have another part of gray industry with no oversight, no licensing fee, nothing to protect the public, it seems an area we ought to be looking at, Jones said. Frank Mirabella, lobbyist for the Florida Arcade and Bingo Association, which represents about 30 arcades, about 30, man. including Fontaine, says the reason for the new interest in, in cracking down isn't consumer protection, it's competition. He said the Broward slots are worried that the arcade siphoned off business, an issue that's become more pressing since the Seminole Tribe's Hard Rock Casino started offering the same kind of slots as the tracks. They got whooped by the Seminoles, and now they want to shut down the arcades, Mirabella said. Well, no, first they got whooped by the state. They got screwed by the state by your fat-ass former governor, De Jebster. And the legislature that screwed them big time. Dan Atkins, president of Mardi Gras Race Strength and Gaming in Hellendale, said he had no role in the latest proposal, but he does think arcades should be closed. They're running an illegal slot operation, clearly, but I'm not trying to push anybody out of business, he said. I'd like to see the criminal law stiffen up so the law has teeth so they can shut them down. Shut them down now, baby. He said elderly people who play the games might not realize the machines are regulated like regular slot machines. Fontana said her machines, which she leases, are programmed with a 65% payout rate, far less than the state required 85%. 85%. Now, oh, that's right. Now, when are you going back to Gulfstream? I was going to say, when did you play the slot? This Friday? This Friday. Are you tell me here on Tuesday? Well, I requested since uh, the middle of last week for some information, and I'm told we're going to get some, and I uh, reminded them again today that the sooner we get it, the sooner we can start talking about it. Right. And they said... Bah, 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 bah. They said... Yeah. They said, don't bother us. Don't start up again, troublemaker. We'll get Fat Boy to throw your ass under the bus again. You're good buddy, you know. You're always oh, yeah. good buddies with the people that try That's to destroy you. Right. We try come to up life. and hang out. Like I told somebody yesterday, you really don't know who your real friends are. But then that's the way it is in life with a lot of people. That's right. Twelve minutes after one <laughs> at 560 WQM. Beware of exploding balls. Good morning, Mickey Mouse's office. Goofy speaking. Good morning, Goofy. How are you? Ooh, it's a tough day over here. Who's calling? Goofy, it's Bob Iger, president and CEO of the Disney Company. You want him? Yes, sir. You sure? Yes. You know it's post-Super Bowl week. We have some business to attend to. Hold the line. Okay, thank you. Hello? Good morning, sir. Oh, oh, back it down. God, I'm going to need a week to climb out of this Super Bowl bender. Sir, what's wrong? Oh, God, Kurt Russell and I tore it up. Kurt Russell? Uh, we go way back. We worked together on the computer, wore tennis shoes. Remember that back in 69? Absolutely. A big hit for the Disney company. Mr. Back it down. You're still very loud on the volume. Sorry, sir. Slogan of that movie was Program for Laughs. My idea! <laughs> Well, sir, I'm glad you had a great time at the oh, Super Bowl. I tell you, man, the sex I had in Phoenix. Sir? Man, that Playboy party was tight. Tight? Uh, sir, what? Tight! You know, smoke it. You got no clue about pop culture vernacular, do you? Oh, well, sir, that's not true. I've been known to get jiggy with it. Oh, my God, get jiggy with it. You're a decade behind. I came right out of Jeff Foxworthy's joke book. Getting jiggy with it was like, what year, Goofy? 98. 98! Well, how about who let the dogs out? Shoot yourself. You know what? Get a gun, load it, cock it, shoot yourself. Sir, sir, you know I don't like guns. No, I don't like guns. You got a window over there? Oh, yes, sir, yeah. Open it up and roll yourself out! Go me! Go me! God, how many times can you watch Trashy Links and that two girls in a cup video? What is it, boss? If I'm out of a pharmacy, get me my Valtrex prescription. How about those giants, Eisner? Uh, that's Iger, sir. Huh? Iger, Bob Iger, sir. Where'd the other kid go? Uh, you, you fired him, remember? Oh, that's right, I canned him. <laughs> and you're the new kid, huh? Well, you know, sir, I'm not new. You just gave me a five-year contract. I did what? How much? Well, last year I made $27 million. Holy sh**, sir! Another suit hanging on my coattails. You know what? You flabby, no personality white guys have been milking me dry for decades. Oh, sir, how old are you anyway? You don't ask a mouse his age, bonehead. Especially when he's paying for your private jet. Uh, oh, so, oh, sorry. Okay, I got no 
Don't seek with God only 80. And that's in mouse years. Oh, well, what's that in human years, sir? It's a lot longer than you're going to be alive, married to Julie Chen. No, no sir. That's Let's Move us from CBS. Like I said, all you flabby white guys look alike. Look, sir, I apologize for bothering you. I just want to update you on the Miley Cyrus movie. You don't have to update me on anything. You know I read Daily Variety every morning while I'm taking a dump. Well, anyway, sir, I think we made the right decision leaving the Miley movie out for one more week. My idea! Actually, sir, you didn't even want to release the movie. Hey, Eisner. Iger, sir. Have your eyes ever filled up with blood? Blood? Uh, no, no, sir. Ah, man, I've been throwing up so much since the Super Bowl that all the blood vessels in my eyes just popped. Ouch, sir. Hey, hey by the way, can you give me a number for Kim Kardashian? I love me some junk in the trunk. She hit the flow. Next thing you know, Shetty got low, 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 low. <laughs> I love me that flow rider. Oh, is that the program with the talking car that they're bringing back on NBC? No, that's Night Rider, you moron. This is low rider. Never mind. I gotta go throw up again, I sir. That's Iger, sir. <laughs> What a mess. Guess who they're talking to about Fidel on CNN? Pick up the relative. Ileana Rosetta Dana. What a surprise. What? I said, what a surprise. Yeah. Eliana Rosanna Dana. Not that she's a one note Charlie. As well as all of the local uh, elected officials, we're all on board saying uh, that this will not happen again. So yeah. whether it's uh, Fidel. Uh, yeah, we missed the part where she said. <laughs> that. You're going to like this. Okay. I like it. Give it to me. University of Oxford researchers will spend nearly $4 million to study why mankind embraces God. Oh, God! The grant to the Ian Ramsey Center for Science and Religion will bring anthropologists, theologians, philosophers, and other academics together for three years to study whether belief in divine being is a basic part of mankind's makeup. Makeup! Now, who was it used to say that all the time? Was that Jackie Gleason? Uh, I don't was know. that Milton Berle, Uncle Milty? Had to be. And they would bring out the big powder puff and hit him yeah. in the face. Mm -hmm. Either Milton Berle or uh, Sid Caesar. Boca Bryan will know. No, not Sid Caesar. Who? Boca Bryan. Oh, who so probably we'll mentioned in that fake uh, letter we got? That's right. There are a lot of issues. What is it? Why? What is it that is innate in human nature to believe in God? Whether it's gods or something superhuman or supernatural, said Roger Trigg, acting director of the center. I wonder if he's kin to do with that very mediocre harness driver, Lowell Trigg. He said, anthropological and philosophical research suggests that faith in God is a universal human impulse found in most cultures around the world, even though it's been waning in Britain and Western Europe. It's waning over there. One implication that comes from this is that religion is the default position, and atheism is perhaps more in need of explanation, he said. The study will be funded by the John Templeton Foundation, U.S.-based philanthropic organization that funds wide-ranging research into questions that deal with laws of nature and issues of spirituality. Oh, yeah. I'm a spiritual guy. I'm a very spiritual... You know, when somebody says that, you know what it means? I'm like yeah. an idiot. Moron. It means they're religious, but they hate that title. Yeah, spiritual. That I'm very label. spiritual. Right. What does that mean? Do you have any idea? No. no but it's just something... They heard said. somebody else say it, so they say it. Because it makes them sound I so much religious more... religious and spiritual. Yeah, that's right. So much better than all the rest of us. That, that's what it's all about. Like all the religionists, you know? We know they're all better than us heathens. We understand that. And have a good time. Have a great time in heaven, baby, sitting there at the Lord's side. Oh, God, you're good. Oh, God, you're good. I'd rather sit beside somebody else and say, oh, God, you're good. Oh, baby. Like that uh, like that character that was on that uh, channel I was watching before on Out TV. Come on out, baby, whoever that was. I'm sure he is. He's what, out? Out. In and out? I'm sure he's a lot of that, too. 173 votes on the new poll. What does that give us now? We had, what, 707? Why do I keep asking you? We got 880, baby. We're going to do 900 plus. You know something? If you'd have really put the pedal to the metal, we'd have had, uh, I don't know, something. Oh, well. Aren't you going to be happy with 900? No, oh, of we course. Were, we had a very crappy start on that other poll. What the hell was that other one? It was almost as bad as the one that George did. Hey. What was that one you did about can you have love without... Uh, oh, romantic know? relationship definitions. It was a Dance Valentine's Day. It was a Valentine's Day poll. Oh, that, that, that was day. cute. That was yeah. sweet, you know. Because some people think that, you know. That you can have a romantic relationship. Somebody bought me a bunch of uh, Godiva chocolates for Valentine's Day, but you know what the good, news, the good news? You didn't need any. He ate them. Oh, good. That before is good Before they got to me. Good. Isn't that good? Great Very piece thoughtful. of news. Muchas gracias and All you get lost. And quit trying to kill me. 
What's your take on Castro's resignation? And I got a, uh, oh yeah, I got all kinds of crap here. We don't have enough time. Let's go over to like 203 when uh, Twerp finally shows up. Okay. okay. Let's see. Castro's resignation won't change a thing. Let's see. Obama says Castro stepping down is an essential first step, but it's sadly insufficient in bringing freedom to Cuba. Very perspicacious, uh, Barack. I don't give a damn, 58. Comunista, Comunista, 23. And it's great, 9. Nueve. Nine. Right. So he's still around? Partly. Boy. He, he's like part of the woodwork, you know? Right. He's furniture. Oh, don't let uh, Josh Friedman sit on him. No. Wouldn't be the first time, though, I bet. Oh. Robert Creeper, he just, you know, he never disappears. He's just always there, always lurking, 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 lurking. I told you when you said that he uh, left and went to Arizona, some I said, I don't believe it. I was right. Right. Whoever told me that, I think it was Chris told me that was yep. full of crap. Hey, you I'm tell me that? I'm telling you what he told all of us. Yeah. Well, you know what? Like, at least he's consistent, because we always said Robert Creeper. <laughs> Hi, this is G. Gordon Liddy, and they don't come any worse than Neil Rogers. Absolutely. Well, 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 why open it with that? That, because it's funny, it uh, makes it sound like uh, we do the show in front of a live audience. It's funny, and it's like uh, real, like, Joey Reynolds-like stuff. <laughs> well, I didn't say nothing to Yet. Uh, everybody's out sick today. Today. Um, Neil is sick. He's not sick. He's in Toronto. Mm -hmm. Toronto. Yeah, that's sick. <laughs> you messing with God. God. Oh, time for my log. Oh. No, man, I'm not those drugs. You guys, I'm a little bit uh, more uh, downbeat, uh, sad. Uh... Yeah, that's a little bit better. Better. <laughs> what are you sad about? We don't wrap my entire show around the heat. I mean, uh, let's face it, they suck. Suck. All I got left to talk about is a little bit of the stats now. Stats. Well, if it makes you feel any better, heat spelled sideways is hate. Can I tell you something? Something. Why? I don't even like basketball. Basketball. Uh, <laughs> Is that a monster? Monster. Would that be a monster? 130 at 560 WQM. We're only 30 minutes away from that, baby. It's going to be real thrilling today. Hey, hey, hey. What? We think. We think 30 what? minutes away, but you know. No, no. Well, I was just going to tell you to make sure of that. Uh -huh. Get a hold of Twerk. Tweet, a twerk. Yeah. And sit his ass down there in the control room like about a quarter hour would be good. Maybe we could set out our own search party every day. You know, I, you're right, though. It, it does frost my ass the more I think about it, about anybody in management or anybody else in the building suggesting that we're doing something wrong because somebody else is incompetent and an income poop. Like we don't know how to end the show. We don't know how to say goodbye. Bye. See ya. My God, Jolly Joe. Bye, bye, bye. Christ Almighty. Man. Martha Stewart, living on the media, is bringing in a new celebrity. Popular TV chef, Emma Legassi. Now, see, ordinarily, when I said Legassi, I could play one of those, but I can't do it. Yeah. The New York-based media and merchandising company, founded by domestic, domesticity maven Martha Stewart, announced this morning it bought the rights to the Emma Legassi franchise of cookbooks, TV shows, and kitchen products. Wait till you hear this. For $45 million in cash and $5 million in stock at closing. $50 million for that goofball. Bam! 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 The final price could get up to $70 million if certain benchmarks are achieved. The company did not acquire Emerald's home base, which includes Legassi's 11 restaurants and corporate orifice. Martha Stewart Living said the deal will contribute immediately to our performance, adding $8 million in earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization. The uh, acquired assets generated $14 million in revenue in 2007. Martha Stewart Living, expect the deal to close in the second quarter. Legassi joined the Food Network in 1993. Has hosted over 1,600 shows. His programs, The Essence of Emerald, Smell It, Ugh, and Emerald Live, reach more than 85 million homes daily. Bam! 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 That's his whole shtick. Bam! And those who know, by the way, say he couldn't cook his way out of a pig. He couldn't make uh, water boil. <laughs> That's My right. mom. Yeah, like your mama. Yeah. Too much drama for your mama. 
How are we doing on that poll? 194 and 707 is what? Oh, my God. 902. 707 and 194 is 902. Where, where did you take math? Oh, ni- I'm sorry. Nine, yeah. 901. I mean, we're over 900, not that I want to nitpick, but why would, why would you say a number that's wrong? Just 708 and 194. 707. Where did you come up with 708 all of a sudden? Where when did I look at vote? view previous, it says 708. What? When I hit view previous? Then why do you keep telling me 707? It's, it's on the table. About? Oh, now it's 708. You've been telling me that all day. Exactly. Over and over. So who cares? 902. And like I said, if you'd have been doing your job big time, we'd have had 1,000 easy today. That was right, hard, that's right. <laughs> yeah, it's after a holiday. You're right. Although now that we got the caster one on there, man, it's generating enormous response. Not Hi, Papa Juan Pablo. Who cares, you know? Right. I'm I'm I do like I like the fact that I put in our Comunista Comunista. It's got 24 votes. Comunista, Comunista. In fact, there's a story. Was it in the Herald? It was somewhere on here. I don't want to go back to it again. It was on one of the websites, and it showed some old geezer, one of the Cuban geezers there from Little Havana, holding up a sign, a free Cuba! Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. got the white golf hat, you know, and oh, oh, yeah. he's at least 140 years old. Oh, brother. They're not doing that here. Good. They're not doing it here either in Broward County. Well, now, why do you say that, like in Broward? That's right, they don't have the green tooth crowd see, in Broward. Just because just I'm a few blocks south of county line, this doesn't feel datish to me down here, you know? Danish? No, or nor, well, if it nor were Danish. Danish there'd be some real attractive people running around if it was Danish. Wow! Wait till next time you go to Copenhagen. <laughs> All right. Oh, actually, Copenhagen. There's some beautiful people there, but boy, that is a boring. And they got some good food too, as a matter of fact. Last time we were there, had a couple of really great meals. That's the problem. And they got a lot of Seven Elevens too in Copenhagen. Every every street corner now, there's another Seven Eleven. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, you know, it's nothing great in there. Although they actually have pizza. They have slices of pizza in 7 Isn't that a little bit unusual? No. Pizza. All for me. I mean, and some of the people me. that are working inside those 7 Elevens are really edible. Really? Wow. Oh, yeah. I've yet to see that happen. 204, man. We are kicking big, bloody. We got 912 votes. So what's our goal? 950? Sure. Oh, well, let's have something to shoot at, man. Maybe Dick Cheney will vote. Cuban Americans resigned a few major changes. Look at this. We as Cuban Americans don't call him president. We call him dictator. What he what he really is. But it does change. It does show uh, that he will no longer be in command. He will no longer be the leading force, which he has been for so many years. And I think that that in itself is a positive thing. Uncertainty, happiness. I've been waiting for 47 years for this. We don't know whether it's a trick from them, whether it's reality. Um, hopefully. It's the truth, and... No, but you keep listening to those Spanish-language radio stations, honey. They'll give, they won't give you any lies. They'll give you the uh, straight... They'll shoot it straight at you. All the BS. The U.S. embargo on Cuba will remain in place despite Castro's announcement that he's resigning. Deputy Secretary of State John Negroponte said, the butcher of the Honduras said today. Asked whether Castro's resignation would change U.S. policy, Negroponte said, I can't imagine that happening anytime soon. President Bush said the move should spark a democratic transition for the communist island nation. <laughs> oh, he's such a clown, that Bush Meister, ain't he? He got a hell of a yeah. sense of humor. Castro said he was stepping down today as president of Cuba and commander in chief of its military, according to a letter published in the country's state run newspaper, Grandma. The U.S. and Cuba, which have no formal diplomatic relations, have been allowed for decades, but tensions between the two countries have increased in the past two years. The Bush administration has tightened the four decades old U.S. embargo on the island, increased radio, radio Marti news broadcast into Cuba, curtailed visits home by Cuban Americans, and limited the amount of money Cuban Americans can send to relatives, making sure that those poor schleppers over there are living a really rough and tough life. Nice going, Bush, Bush, Bush. The U.S. has also been working on plans for post Castro Cuba. A 2006 report by the Commission for Assistance to a Free Cuba laid out the framework for Washington's possible response in the event of Castro's incapacitation or death. The U.S. response should include tens of millions of dollars in humanitarian economic aid, but might also be dependent on transitional government that's committed to democracy. Right. You know, when they, when they screwed up real bad, man, when they, when they went in there with, uh, and, and screwed up all the hotels, why couldn't they just leave the uh, casinos there? Comunista, comunista. You know, right? That's right. That's one of the first things they did, man, was shut down the damn casinos. Bastards. 
And Hyman Roth wasn't any too happy about it. I'll tell you that right now. Everybody, enjoy your cake. Enjoy your cake. <coughs> Remember that scene on the roof? Oh, yeah. They were on the roof. Michael. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Michael was on to it. Why you saw those, up a big mouth? He saw those revolutionaries, people. man. Yeah. They were, uh, and uh, uh, yeah. the soldiers get paid, and the revolutionaries, they don't get paid. That's right. And you know what that means? If the, suit, if the briefcase is there, although I have a partner, if it's not, I'll know I don't. don't. <laughs> I'm going in to take a nap. <laughs> At least one activist in Miami said Castro's resignation doesn't mean Cuba's any closer to democracy. It doesn't mean any change to the system. It doesn't mean there'll be freedom for Cubans. One dictator is replacing the other. One big dictator is replacing the other. Watch it. It's said Janet Rivero, executive director of Cuban Democratic Directorate, which works with dissidents in Cuba. It will be a big deal when political prisoners are released, when political parties are allowed to organize, when the country stops being ruled by a single party, Rivero said. Call her when the party started. Senator Mel Martinez, Republican of Florida, also said, Today is not the ultimate day of change. It's the beginning of a process. Hopefully that will lead to change, to real change. The initial change has to come from the Cuban government. Martinez, a Cuban native. What Martinez? Which is that? Mm-hmm. Oh, Mel Martinez, oh. who emigrated, emigrated to the U.S. at 15, said, I have no hope that Raul Castro has been, frankly, the older brother's enforcer through most of the time they've been in power. He'll be the kind of agent in charge that Cuba needs today. What I think will happen is that we'll see, hopefully, in the future, a new set of leaders that will come with new ideas. But a beat, but a boop, but a bop. And a partridge in a pear tree. And your mama. Forget about grandma. Worry about your mama. Oh, look at that. The votes are pouring in on the Castro poll. I'm telling you, man, if you'd have put the big, the big uh, kahuna on it, look at that. I just spit on my glasses. That's bad. Oh, Ooh. my God. I don't know. Lunger? It was, it was dandruff. Loogie? No. Greasy Lunger? Hoogie. Hoogie Carmichael. <laughs> Biggest name. Hoogie the Hauser. best talent. This is Neil Rogers. Sports Radio 560 QAM. The sports leader. <laughs> Uh-oh. Okay, let's get right on the log, okay? No, not that log. Oh, oh. Mm. Mm-mm. 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 Let's go talk a little bit about the heat, 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 heat, the We got a call here. Hello. Oh, I love it. Just love it. We're grooming you for 10 to 2. Oh, oh, keep me up. <laughs> Do you realize how much you sound like Joe Bell? Think so? Think so. Yeah. Well, okay. Well, why don't we ask uh, Seth McFarlane? McFarlane. Hmm? The guy who does most of the voices on Family Guy. Is Seth McFarlane on the phone? Yo, Seth, yeah. I've just been told me and Joe Bell sound alike. Really? I don't hear it. Actually, I think I do hear it now. Really? Yeah, you know, we've never really had any extended interaction, so I've never noticed it. Hey, I think I hear it, too. Well, there's only so many voices in the world. Some of them are bound to be similar. Thanks, Seth. Uh, we'll be back with uh, Clarence's protege, Percy Pullowinky, after this word. You know, the Lord of in mysterious ways. Have you ever stopped to think about it? How oh, not only are there just so many faces and so many bodies, but only mm-hmm. so many voices. Right. Isn't it something how God uh, works? Hey, oh, God! I mean, are there any two people? I mean, we've got identical twins, and sure. you know, visually, many of them are so identical, you can't tell them apart. Right. Usually, identical twins uh, tend to be really good-looking, too. I don't know what that is. By the way, Joyce is working her magic in my colon. Really? Right at 2 o'clock. Well, I may not have time for too many of those. Wow. Well, be careful what where you let her put about? that wand. I beg your pardon? Wreck them. No, but the voice thing is uh, is interesting. Do you think there are any two people that have exactly the same voice? There's seven billion people in the world. There, there must there, be. There must be. Statistically, there must be. Like all them schmata heads, they might, you know, Ahmed and all those guys. Yeah, they all sound, sound the same to me. Like that. Oh, that's the Indians. 233 on a pool. Boy, Chris just missed his calling, man. 941. So we're going to definitely do the 950. And if with a little prodding from you, man, we, we could, of course, it's my fault because I'm the one that came up with that damn Jesus pool again. Uh-huh. Uh, well, oh, you know, uh, nobody's sending me any polls anymore. Sean, the pool guy from Hollywood, he don't send any more polls. Charlie B, he dried up with that damn uh, with that sandwich filling. He dried up along with the tuna. I think he got tired of you insulting him. Yeah, exactly. You drove him off. It's your fault. 
a, a, a wealth of endless pole materials, and you had to drive them off. Crap. A wealth of endless, unadulterated... Crap. Mm-hmm. No, no, once in a while. Yeah. Now you're getting, you're getting me ahead of myself now. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to get you. Well, no, I'm just ahead. turning everything off over. It's only 147. Well, you know something? Maybe a tweak ought to uh, make up for a little bit of lost time over there on the 2 o'clock, 2 to 4 show on the Jerk Show. How much you figure he owes us now? An hour and a half? About 30, man. About half an hour. I, I don't know. I don't really... Uh, well, see, I can't hear it. Because there are many days when um, Chris doesn't pot up the... Uh, he doesn't switch over the thing so I can hear the audio. Well, I put it on. I mean, I put it on right away. Well, why not? I, I don't want to miss a word, man. Are you kidding me? I don't want to miss a single word. All right. I want to know exactly when we're done so I can shut everything off and go run uh, to the can. Lionel Tate pleaded no contest today to robbery charges. Boy, he sure got some issues, you know what? Yeah. Tate, who was accused of robbing a pizza delivery man in Pembroke Park, May 2005, was still on probation for killing his 60-year-old playmate, Tiffany Eunuch, in 1999. Maybe they should have made Lionel a eunuch. Mm -hmm. Tate, 21, will not serve any extra time in prison. Well, thank God for that. The defense and prosecutors negotiated a deal in which Tate would serve 10 years to run at the same time as the 30 years he's already serving for violating his probation by committing robbery. Jury selection in the robbery trial was set to begin today. I wouldn't be surprised if Joe Rose is on the jury. Assistant State Attorney Chuck Morton said there was some DNA evidence that connected Tate to the crime, but some that connected other people as well. Some witnesses also recanted their statements. It doesn't make much sense to proceed to a trial, Morton said. Tate's attorney, Jim Lewis, said Tate was involved in taking pizzas from the delivery man's car, but didn't pull a gun on the man. Lewis said to last Broward County Judge Joel Lazarus to revisit the 30-year sentence for violating probation. About 30, man! These people that steal pizza, do, 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 do. they just, I don't know, I have no sympathy for them. Do, 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 do. We're not saying that what Lionel did was right, Lewis said, but 30 years is crazy. Well, that choice is just, uh, remember that song, Working yeah. My Way Back to You? I was thinking, knock, knock, knocking on Heaven's Door. Working My Way Back Through You. Oh, my God. Tate's mother, Kathleen Gross, at Tate left court t- uh, today, sa- yesterday. What day is today? Tuesday. Yes. Today, saying, I'm tired of the whole system, the whole case, I'm just tired. Yeah, we're tired, too. Aren't you tired? I'm tired. Retire. Working my way back to you. Frankie Valley in the four squee- uh, wow. squeezing for good reason. That's what I'm going to be doing. Working my way back Soon. to you, babe. With a burning love inside. See, I can't, I mean, I like their music, the four seasons. And, you know, even though they weren't, I don't know what to make of them. You know what I mean? In other words, I like them, but I don't want to admit it. I, I, I like them, but it was a little corny and dated, that whole sound. Yeah, that false set of Now, sound. even though this is a remake, I like this version a lot better. And normally, I don't like the other uh, remakes. I like the original much better. But, you know, the spinners. Who's this? The spinners, oh, the spinner. baby. How can you not love the spinners? I love the spinners. Oh, everybody loves the spinners. You like, like the spinners. Spin the spinners. Right. Spin I don't spin want to yours, know you. I'll spin mine. You're a comedy if you don't love the spinners. So many good songs. Yeah. Now, you like that better than the Four Seasons? It's, yeah, yeah, I, mean, I do. It's the, it's, same, it's the same song, but it's, it's the like same a whole song, different song. It's so rich and creamy the it's way It's the same old song. Way back to way back to you, man. This sounds so much better. Are you knocking Frankie's Valley now? Yeah. Is he still alive? I guess he is, huh? Yes. Then there's this. Oh, Rubber Band. Oh, yeah. This may be the best song of all time. I agree it's with you. It's certainly one of the top uh, mm-hmm. 4,000. You bet. Just like me, I'm one of the top 50,000 talk hosts in, in the USA. Never got Florida. tired of this. Amen. 240 on Chris's pole. Where the hell is this thing? Here. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, not now, Tweak. <laughs> See? Well, no, I better not, I better not play that before this. we get out of here because no. he doesn't... Uh, I mean, I, listen. Okay, kill that. I realize that we work in a place that is devoid of radio knowledge that has little or nothing to do with the radio broadcasting industry. But that having been said, how many days, how many minutes, how many milliseconds does one need to spend in and around that place before you understand the basic machinations of what it's all about? You follow what I'm saying? Huge word. Try to correct. Tried to I, I, I worked assiduously to give you a oh, good word. You no, know, come on, keep keep coming down. Well, look at that. Minus six, it's going to be minus twelve tonight. But overnight, not too bad. I think I'll go to Woodbine at midnight and stay till about ten in the morning. We'll let you do the show. Now, what day is tomorrow? Tomorrow's Wednesday. Oh, tomorrow's the dermatologist appointment. Yeah. Spinners, baby. 
Love it. All spinners all day on Q95. All right. It's our new format. All the spinners, all the gradles all the time. That's right. I'm going to get me a sit and spin, and I'm going to spin on it. Yeah, spin on this. I'm going to spin on it. By the way, if I'm not back in time for the uh, last... Uh, hey, I'll be around. Yeah, I'll be around, right. Because uh, I'm telling you, man, Joyce has hit me with a vengeance. I don't know what she's getting with me for today. Maybe for ripping the tweet too much. Now, is he in there? Is he in the room? Put Chris in charge of this. Go around the hall with a leash with a, with a butterfly net and grab that thing and stick it on. in the chair. Okay, what? He just responded. He's there. He's locked and loaded in. He's on boy, deck. Tweak. You can do it, baby. Just just stick your nose to the grindstone, okay? And get it really brown. Wreck him. Uh, the grindstone, too. And get with it or else. His name. The best talent. This is Neil Rogers. Sports Radio 560 QAM. The sports leader. It's day. Oh. Miami Town. Get the chairs. At 560 WQAM. Every time they see that we're lacking in the polls They provide a headline that will lead you by the nose Who said, they said, is the one to get Now they have only one big don't worry about Sudan, we got them. Now we're all pumping and saying, we got them. We won't attack us no more, we got them. Praise push by Jesus. Who say 9-11 is what they got you to do? Can't get any dumber than a one party country. You believe what they say, like the fall of the as they use the states, so they fall with two. Oh, how's the election all? We got them. Bye bye bye. The biggest names, the best talent, and your home for Miami Dolphins football.